welcome to the Playing With Power podcast. I am Mike, and my co-host can introduce himself right now. Hi, this is Ben. This is our first podcast, and we're delighted to share it with you. So we're going to be going back through the original issues of Nintendo Power magazine, starting with the very first one in July of 1998. And uh, the reason why this came about is I have the vast majority of the issues sitting in my uh, garage. And um, I asked my friends on Facebook, hey, what should I do with these uh, Nintendo Power magazines? And uh, everyone, someone su suggested uh, you should do a podcast. So uh, here we are. And now I know uh, Mike's done podcasts before. Um, and he's also a comedian. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, it's listed as one podcast in iTunes, but with several shows all in one feed. And I'm on the Technobabble one. And I came about that by uh, striking up a attempted flirt with one of the uh, bingo patrons at the bingo hall I work at. But found out she was married. But she was cool, so I thought, well, what the hell, I'll make a friend anyway. And then she decided to that her husband was getting antsy and that she tried to set me up on a play date with him, so to speak. And, uh, and got us to talk on Skype. And he's a nerd into like geek, oh. like nerd slash geek. Another two different things. I equate the nerd as the more technological uh, savvy person and the geek is the more, you know, lore, pop culture. Sure. Well, that's funny. He, I thought you would have uh, found this person from doing stand up, but that's well, interesting. You got it through your through your job. Well, yes, but the stand up gave because I was doing the stand up. They were like he wanted someone with a bit of a you know outgoing personality, and you know by doing stand up, he made me seem like a viable candidate rather than just you know some shy some schmuck whatever. like me out the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's just like, oh, a comedian, maybe he can make the podcast amusing. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. And uh, you can find the uh, episodes of Geek Fallout, specifically the Technobabble episodes, and find out, you know, if I uh, if I make it nice or not. Oh. They decided to promote me from guest from the first episode to co-host to the second episode. Nice. Well, let's. Uh, I've listened to them; they're they're very good. But let's let's dig it in our own podcast here. <laughs> Enough pimping. Let's. What <laughs> do we have to in. offer? So I want to talk about the cover first and foremost. Oh, uh, so, the, cl the claymation cover. <laughs> the claymation version of Super Mario Two. Why is Mario blue? That is a good. I think that's what happens in that game when you get like a mushroom or a power up. Don't you know, like the colors invert? I haven't played Mario World 2 in a long time, but I really don't recall seeing Mario do a palette swap. <laughs> I think that's what it was from from just just from looking at the the innards of the Nintendo Power issue here. But I I want to point something out. I don't know if you've ever played uh, Donkey Kong Country. Did the, you play uh, that? Yes, I remember the uh, lovely introduction with the uh, Donkey Kong theme, and then they decide to hip hop it up. After oh, yeah. seeing, mm -hmm. uh, after uh, old Donkey Kong is rocking on the chair to the old grandma phone, and then they bring in new Donkey Kong, and it's like, boom, 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 doo, doo, doo. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, they had a drum beat. They got to make this for the kids. This ain't your daddy's Donkey Kong. <laughs> so the uh, the bad guy that's chasing after Mario here, blue, blue Mario here, on the cover, his name is uh, Wart in this game. Yeah. But he looks almost exactly like King K. Rule, which is the bad guy <laughs> from Donkey Kong Country. He does! And uh, the, the claymation looks nothing like the uh, wart that's in the game either. I, I know, <clears throat> and, and you think like, okay, maybe they screwed up the cover. And because like Mario's got like the blue cap and he's got like what, a red insignia for his name instead of white with the red letter? Right. And... You think, okay, well, this was this may have just been a screw up, but then you see the the Mario art in the margins of the article, mm -hmm. and it alternates between the Mario we know, even though he's drawn with a more Goomba-like face with jowls, like Droopy Dog, right. but he's got the right colors, 
and then he'll alternate to Blue Hat Mario, and they never seem to address this. It's like nobody even noticed. We have a regular Mario and a Blue Blue Mario. Blue Mario. <laughs> like maybe like, they were still like, getting <laughs> used to uh, drawing Mario. I mean, this is first yeah. issue, you know. Color, color palette issues are, are or, common in 80s cartoons, so I wonder if they use similar artists. Um, yeah. Or a proto, yeah, right. proto Wario. So if you actually flip on the inside cover, something uh, interesting I've never noticed before, um, looking at it again, but if you looked at these cheesy actors that are doing the power line to the pros, they're holding the first copy of Nintendo Power, but the cover is not claymation, it's illustrated. So I'm wondering if their first cut of making the cover was an illustration, and at some point someone someone had the grand idea of making a claymation for some reason. That I passed that part up. I'm going to have to look at it again. What got me was what was on the other side of the page, saying Nintendo, the new bi-monthly magazine. Yep. Which is nice to know that you know it it came out of the closet as opposed to the cis monthly <laughs> magazines. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to know, know it's nice to know they're they, proud oh yeah and it's not just that I mean there's also Birdo who we'll get to oh, a yeah. little, who we'll get some, to in a minute some controversy and, uh, there oh yeah like the one of the first trans villains right and you know they just so they got the you got the bi magazine the cis villains so it's nice to know that for the 80s this was very politically open minded even accidentally so. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so the inside cover, we've got the advertisement for the power line to the pros, which is uh, Nintendo's hotline. If you have trouble with your game, and you can call someone and uh, get tips on how to get through it. So apparently, um, if you look at the actors in the photo, you have to meet a certain criteria. Number one, you have to be white. Um, okay. Number two, you are issued a gray puffy jacket with your name on it. Um, Number three, you have to wear blue jeans. And number four, you have to wear white tennis shoes. Oh, yeah, you got, you got to be preppies. Because, so. you know, because you know what black kids in the 80s were doing? They were just hanging out in the ghettos with their boom oh, boxes right. and, their, and their graffiti tags. And so, you know, they, they weren't playing Nintendo. They were, too, uh, they were too street for that. But They were breakdancing in the streets on cardboard. Oh, yeah, to the Rocksteady crew and... Right. Meanwhile, these these preppies, they all look like like slightly lamer versions of Freddy from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> it's like if he just applied himself and actually went to preparatory school instead of just, you know, losing the jacket and walking around with the ascot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, don't get me started on the ascot. That is, that is something else. That's not even like a thing of the times. Anyways, we're, get, we're getting off track here. <laughs> All right, so moving on, their cover is Super Mario Brothers 2. Let's dig into it. So um, yep. what were some of the things that you learned about Super Mario Brothers 2 from reading this that you, that you didn't know before? Well, the interesting thing is, is I had a late start with Nintendo Power magazine because I remember seeing the Claymation cover when I was going through Zellers. And... I uh, tried skimming it, but hold since on. I didn't, for what is? Can you go back? What is Zellers? Oh, it's a Canadian uh, department store where What's the that? lowest price is the law, according what to is, the jingle uh, from the eighties. Is that like equivalent to like a Walmart? It uh, it it's the it's a type of store that Walmart crushed. <laughs> okay, so it's no longer around. I think it's in a very reduced capacity, if it exists at all. Okay, and I would remember going through the aisle, seeing this claymation thing, and I just thought. Well, I don't know what Mario is, but he looked kind of cool. Then I tried flipping through the magazines, and, you know, it was all about video games, and I didn't, uh, came from a bit of a, uh, a less than affluent family, so it was a while before I got my own Nintendo. I just remember Nintendo was something that other kids had that I didn't, uh, and then when I did, I had to rent my games from a, a video store, because I didn't mm. have enough money to buy them. Uh, what about you? What was your Nintendo experience? Were you like a little better off or were you like on the uh, fringes of Nintendo? Well, mine was kind of unique. Um, I actually lived overseas in Italy at the time and um, I got my Nintendo, I want to say 80, 89, maybe 88. 
Oh, so, um, so the so the first few issues of Nintendo Power wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have meant anything to you. No, I didn't. I mean, I might have got. I don't remember exactly <coughs> when I got my Nintendo, but um, being overseas, I didn't really have a whole lot of opportunity to play new games aside from the ones that my friends had, who were also from the United States or from anywhere that had the NTSC system. That's um, they basically had. If you were in USA, you had a USA system. If you were in Europe, you had a PAL system. And what that meant was that you couldn't use your um, USA or Canadian cartridges in the European systems and vice versa. They just wouldn't work. Did um, they look the same? Because I remember... Uh, yeah, they I looked was, exactly the same. Because when I was going through a store, I remember... I don't remember where the store was, but a guy had a Nintendo device hooked up and he had Jeopardy, mm-hmm. but it was a top-loading Nintendo. Well, no, they, they actually... Nintendo did actually come out with a top-loading uh, NES way late in its life cycle, I want to say well after the Super Nintendo was around. Um, Which was a good idea, but way too late. Right, well, I mean, it was already of, at the end of its life cycle anyways. It's kind of like of the equivalent of you know, the, the miniature versions that come out or the slimline versions of consoles that come out these days, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, well, I just thought like, it, how many of us would have avoided those, uh, those cartridge errors like blowing on it? Because most, <laughs> most of the time it seemed like it was the spring that would give out, and then you wouldn't have the connection. So if you had a top loader, less moving parts makes a more mechanically viable product. Yeah, it was interesting how they came up with the whole, you load it from the front and then slam it down. I guess and, it, uh, I, guess I don't they, know where like the, the, the whole blowing into the cartridge thing came about, but it's something we all just kind of knew. You know? it's, yeah, it's something we all just, it, 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 we intuited it. It was and in the, the, con- the human consciousness of, well, there must be <laughs> dirt on the end of this thing. i got to blow it out. You know? yeah, if, it's, if it's dust, you blow it off. Pretty much. So, yeah. So, anyways, I had a uh, subscription to Nintendo Power from, uh, I just looked in the box, from about 1999 until about um, 1999. So... Hmm. For about 10 years, I had a subscription, and while I was living overseas until about 96, that was my only uh, avenue into video games, period. So I didn't even know that, for example, PlayStation existed until I moved back. (laughs) Um, And I knew about, like, Sega Genesis and stuff because I had friends that had it. Um, And I'd see stuff in stores and be like, oh, what is this, you know, 3DO business? It's not Nintendo. It must be garbage, you know? So I was a total like Nintendo uh, fanboy for a long oh. time. Same uh, with me. Result. Nintendo was the only thing that existed <laughs> when I became aware of video games. Like I had to find out later on about like uh, uh, ColecoVision. Oh yeah. And, uh, I had like friends. I had like a an, an I, Atari. Yeah, and the, I just the looked 2600. at the like. What what is this? This doesn't make any sense. The first video game console had to be Nintendo, you know. Yeah, this um, is weird. That's because yeah, that was one of the things I grew up with was the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, playing Yars Revenge, Solar Fox, mm-hmm. uh, Berserk. But uh, when I saw a Nintendo at my friend's place for the first time, I, I just freaking near lost my shit because <laughs> you you see Zelda and you got like a menu and it's got like words on it you can read. Right. And I'm like, wait, wait a second, these aren't massive blocks. They're like tiny blocks, and they're arranged so tightly together that you can read words, and, you know, they can actually, like, say things on it rather than just like, here's a screen, move around and figure out what doesn't kill you. Right. <laughs> and no, uh, I remember getting fr- it and for Christmas, and um, I remember when we first hooked it up and tried to play it, my, my uh, dad and I tried to play it together, and our initial instinct was the first jump you get to Mario. We, you know, it took us a, a number of tries in Super Mario Brothers just to get to the first like jump area where there's a gap. And our reaction, our, our initial reaction to this was to physically move the controller up in the air to jump <laughs> to jump Mario across this gap. And some, you know, sometimes we thought, oh, if we jump in the air, it makes it go higher. You know, so we're sitting there in our living room jumping up, and of course, it's doing. Absolutely nothing, you know. <laughs> but that's the kind of that was like the natural reaction. There's an accelerometer in the controller. I'm sure of it. Well, when, it, when I saw them come out with the Wii 
you know, many years later, I thought, of course, you know, for anyone that doesn't hasn't grown up playing Purdue games, their initial reaction is to move it physically, and this is probably like going to change, you know, bring some new people into the video game realm as a result because they just oh, move yeah. the controller. Oh yeah, and uh, I can't remember when I exactly started uh, subscribing to Nintendo Power. As we go on mm -hmm. in further episodes, I'm sure one of these covers will strike nostalgia as like this was the first one I I got in the mail. But well, uh, just before was... we started recording this episode, I pulled out the box of Nintendo Powers from my garage, and the first one I have is actually the fourth issue with Zelda Two on the front. Ooh. So we'll get to that one. It was a. But. I got the first thing I became about uh, when I became aware of Nintendo Power was uh, seeing my going to a friend's place, and he had Dragon Warrior. But I just thought, you know, this game is kind of cool, but I kind of don't know where to go. And he's like, and he brings out like these physical maps, and it's got like a whole list of like which shops have uh, herbs and weapons and how right. much they cost. And I'm like, where did you get all this? Yeah, and he's like, it, it came with my subscription to Nintendo Power. And Nintendo I'm like, power. Nintendo Power. Yeah, we gotta see if we can actually get that <laughs> song. Yeah, we ripping it off. All right, so back to Mario Mario Brothers Two. So I learned a lot by by looking at this and uh, and reading about Super Mario Brothers Two. So first what? off, I, I want to talk about the description of the four characters because you can play as Mario, Luigi, Toad, or Princess. Oh yeah, they don't Toad. they don't call her Pe Peach or anything. By the way, it's just Princess. Yeah, yeah Peach doesn't become Peach until she becomes blonde. Every <laughs> other thing refers to her as Princess Toadstool, and when you look at her in uh, this. Princess, mm -hmm. as princess described in there, she can float, which is like pretty cool to make to give like such a useful power to a girl right. for such a an early game. Mm -hmm. But seeing the art again, she looks just like she did in the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Right. And you know, from what I uh, and even in Super Mario Brothers one, two, and three, she was a brunette and referred to Toadstool. She wasn't really referred to Peach until Super Mario World, and that's when she got the blonde hair. Mm. So I wonder if she's a completely different person, as as well as Princess Daisy from Super Mario Land. Right. So I wonder if they try to diverge Princess Daisy and Princess Toadstool. I mean, Princess Toadstool in half, so it became Daisy and Peach then. You know, <laughs> the yin and yang, yeah. if you will, of the princesses. Also on the uh, cover arch, we get to see Toad, but he doesn't have the red dots as we all know him to have. Mm -hmm. He's got purple dots, which is sort of like a subliminal tie into the actual Super Mario Brothers 2, which came mm -hmm. out in Japan and came out here in Super Mario All-Stars as the Lost Levels, which right. introduced a poison mushroom, mm -hmm. where if you touched it, you took damage, shrunk, or friggin' died. And that's what this toad looks like. So it's like a neat little nod yeah. to the game we weren't getting because apparently Japan thought, "Oh no, these gaijin, they're, they 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 just won't get it. They're too they're too dumb." Right. So here's what I like the quote they put under Toad. They just say, "He is the worst <laughs> jumper." <laughs> I'm like wow, that's awesome. That's what they get to say about the Toad's introduction to the world. This is the first game he's in. And that's how yeah. we introduce him. He is the worst jumper. Yeah, where he's not, where he's not a uh, brick block, right? Because if you remember the manual from Super Mario Brothers, it says that all the people of the Mushroom Kingdom were transformed into bricks, which makes Mario a genocidal monster when he's just tearing ass through the Mushroom Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Unless you're unless you're just hitting question blocks, you're you're just smashing people who would have been restored back. I mean, when you defeat Bowser, I just imagine that you're just leaving scattered limbs all over the place once they, once the spell is broken and they get restored to flesh. Like, <laughs> so why I have that in there. It's like, you're going to be smashing bricks. By the way, the bricks are people. Have fun. So when I played um, Mario 2 back in the day, I never actually owned it. I had the first one, and a friend of mine had the second one, and I played at his house. And I just didn't like it. It was just kind of weird. It was totally different from the first one. It didn't seem like it was a true sequel. Yeah, now, even the motion, you felt like you're swimming around when you jump. Right. It's like when Mario jumped before, he seemed to be like, 
yeah, it's like you went up, you went down, but here you jump and you see like his feet flutter and he's like, he's like, is he on the moon? Because it's kind of reduced gravity. So um, I went and, and did some research on the game. And first thing that clued me off was uh, if you read Nintendo Power, it says this takes place in a dream. Yep, like, the land, the, the whole land of a dream. Sub, yep, the world, of, the land of subcon or subconscious. Yeah. Yep. So I went back and looked, and um, so like you said, they they had a legitimate sequel to Super Mario Brothers released in Japan. Um, and what happened was Nintendo of America, which is a small fledgling company at the time, basically their you know their United their American arm said, um, yeah, this is way too difficult for our average player, and we want the game to be fun. This isn't fun. It's just you're pulling your hair out because of how difficult it is. They basically took the game, uh, Super Mario Brothers, from where it ended and just continued with it and kept the difficulty going as, it, as, it, as they did. Because um, Japan, Japan's not about fun. It's about... <laughs> It's about mind-numbing difficulty, repetition. Just punishing and, you constantly. Yeah, which speaks about their mindset in ways that it we is. can only speculate, but I right. don't think it's going to take us anywhere good, so we're just not going to look into it. We're just going to pretend it's like, oh, right. those crazy, those crazy creative people. So they had made this game called Doki Doki Panic, which um, they made in conjunction with a TV station, Fuji TV, and you put their characters into this game. Um, and it takes place in a book in Arabia about a family trying to save two children. So that's two parents and two kids, and that's how they. Um, so they basically said, "Okay, you don't. You think that the real Super Mario Brothers Two is too difficult? How about we reskin this game?" And they did. So they reskinned it with um, Mario, Luigi, Toad, and the princess. And uh, they changed out a few of um, the sound effects and a few of the uh, art, lots of pieces of art, uh, but not a ton. Um, I went back and looked at some Doki Doki Panic videos, and the music is pretty much exactly the same. So the classic theme songs that we think of when we think of Super Mario Bros. 2 actually came from Doki Doki Panic, which I thought was uh, very interesting. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, another thing I've just noticed from the album art um, the uh, art in here that another palette swap thing that shows up is that Mario has yellow gloves. <laughs> now, I think it was trying to identify him with his pixel picture where he has hands the same color as his face. Mm. I don't know why they just didn't give him white, but I figured, you know, maybe three colors at a time is all that they could, they all thought to do. But then instead of, but then he also has white gloves in the same page above. <laughs> where he's just like looking all fat faced and smiling at the camera. Right. Yeah, did you if you flip again, you'll see him in his blue outfit again. You know, I wonder mm -hmm. if um he appears with that in subspace when you use one of the potions or if like, you know, when you do the star man and you get the invincibility if um, when he's flashing, if he flashes to one of those colors and that's where they grabbed it, you know? Maybe. Maybe I, uh... the artist got sent like a screen grab of the middle of one of those things. They're like, ah, that's Mario. <laughs> or they you just know? figured, it's kids. No one's really going to pay attention <laughs> to this. Let's just phone it in. Yeah. Or like, yeah, they're just like, well, I don't agree with their palette <laughs> choices. I'll just pick my own, you know? No, which is strange for a game that really should have been like a misfit. A lot of characters in this have mm -hmm. become canon, such as the Shy Guys, Mouser, Birdo, Pokey, the cactus guy, yep. the Babombs, they're friggin' iconic now. They mm -hmm. weren't in the original Mario Brothers. They came out in Mario Brothers 2, but you see them show up in Mario Brothers 3. You just knock them, kick them around, they blow up. And uh, one character that didn't, I haven't seen him around in other ones, but uh, still think it's worth mentioning, was the glowing mask that shows up whenever you <laughs> go into a vase or a room to pick up a key. And even as a kid... When I first played this game, I looked at that and thought, "Why is Jason here?" <laughs> yeah, and then he starts coming. They, uh, he starts coming after you, and you can't. No matter what you do, you can't seem to kill him. And I'm like, "He's unkillable. He has a hockey mask. It's friggin' Jason. What's Jason doing in the Mario Land?" Well, it's clearly his nightmare. I would say Th that would be Freddy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that uh, <laughs> there's a reason they didn't carry him on to the next Mario game. You know. 
I think okay. maybe I think New Line Cinema may have said like, okay, we, okay, look, we noticed, we let you have one, but come on, everyone's gonna know. And that's when they made the Friday the Thirteenth video game, which is hilariously bad. <laughs> which is which has a purple Jason, right? But we'll see if Nintendo Power covers that in the future. So let's get into talking about Birdo. So Birdo is the first boss you see. You see him several times in the game. And um, you read Nintendo Power, um, they, they mention him as he. Okay? Yep. And the manual says, he thinks he's a girl and shoots eggs from his mouth. Um, so there is a, there's quite a bit of uh, controversy about the gender of Birdo. Yeah, so, he's, is he trans? Or, you know, the right. thing is, if he thinks he's a girl, why is he able to produce eggs? So, I mean, okay. that sounds like the that sounds like the old hypnotist joke of like, Doc, my husband thinks he's a chicken. Well, how do you want me to uh, fix him? I don't want you to like. I, or it's like, no. How did it go? Yeah, my doc, uh, my where like the uh, the hypnotist tells the guy he's a chicken, and then he's just like, okay, now I'm going to switch him back. And then the wife says, well, no, we need the eggs. <laughs> so it's like real mind over matter. He thinks he's a girl so much that he's been that. He's, he's been a, it. His his cranium is now an ovipositor, mm. and now he can just generate ovum at will. But uh, maybe he's more like a frog, where you can, you don't need another sex to uh, regenerate. Oh yeah, he's like one of the oh yeah, like those clownfish. Right. Whenever the uh, the female of the group dies, the uh, the male no yeah when when the male of the of the school dies, the strongest mm. female just decides. All right, time to time to butch up, and she just becomes bigger, and becomes male. Hmm. So that may be what this guy is. It's possible. I mean, he might be the last of his kind. So you know, it's up to his him to to make yep. their species progress. Unfortunately, yep. he's so dumb he just shoots his eggs out at Mario. <laughs> now, in future uh, games that I've seen, mm -hmm. it's been alluded to that Birdo is Yoshi's girlfriend. Now, <laughs> not. Not boyfriend, girlfriend. Right. So I figure he's trans, and by the time Yoshi meets him, he's fully transitioned. He's post-op. Yeah, he's a post-op, and that's why it's okay. Like, Yoshi's mm. not gay, he's just... <laughs> op he's, he's not, not that there's gay. anything wrong with that. Nope, he's not that there's anything wrong with that, but he's not gay. He's just very... He's just open-minded. I see. So in Japan, apparently, Birdo is, is named Catherine. Wow. And, um, he has frequently stated that he is a male. Uh, he's always depicted as a female after this game, and he's voiced by uh, a woman, the same woman who voices Peach in all like the Super Smash Brothers games and, and all that. Uh, in Super Smash Brothers Brawl, it states that Birdo's gender is indeterminate and refers to him slash her as it. As far as far as Yoshi's concerned, a mouth is a mouth. Well, apparently. <laughs> and what a, a big mouth. one that can spit out eggs. <laughs> Well, so, now we know. Now we now we know he spits, right? <laughs> so that's Birdo for you. Yep. So moving on into the rest of the issue, uh, there's anything else you want to talk about with Mario Two? Uh, yes, there was the next page where it says like Mar Super Mario Brothers Two Sports Festival. Now it's just a whole bunch of crude drawings where shot guys don't even have white masks, and it's just. Uh, all the characters displaying their jumping ability, where Peach has the long jump ability, Luigi has the high jump ability, and Toad is just great at picking stuff up. Now, below him is a Birdo who, for copyright reasons, I have to I have to say he's a copyright violation of Cubert. <laughs> yeah, because, he's kind of got that like, cannon nose. Yeah, mouth he doesn't. Thing he doesn't. On. He doesn't have a snout. He has a friggin' open beak thing yeah. and he's shooting up like three marbles at a time like it's Q-Bird and Marble Madness and he's doing a uh, shot put <laughs> yeah he just can't be stopped yeah I mean this whole art it just looks like fan art honestly it does not look like yeah. a professional job now the rest now as for the coverage of the game I don't really have too many comments aside from telling us showing us right from the very start complete maps fantastic mm -hmm. coverage Letting us know which places are shortcuts so that, because mm -hmm. you know, without Nintendo Power, if you saw a pit, what's your first impulse? Avoid it. Sure. And then you would see someone else play it, 
and you'd be like, don't go in there, you retard! And then there's like a whole new level and you're like, okay, I guess I'm the retard. Yeah, I remember looking at the 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 take it says take a shortcut here on World One One. At the very end of the of the level, you get to it and you climb this ladder down and you see the door to exit the level on the other side of a brick wall. And you're just kind of looking at it, going, "What the hell?" You know, are they yeah. just are they the creators just trolling me here? And you yeah. try to like <laughs> jump and you can't get in and no matter what, right? You've got well, a limited supply of bombs and when you throw them, they just don't. It's not just that. I mean, you have to time the bomb yeah, throw to, just yeah. so so it bounces off of the lower ground. Or, or you, cook, you cook the grenade correct. and just wait for Just think like, all right, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, and just hope that nobody distracts you and makes you lose count so that you yeah. don't let go of the son of a bitch. I mean, this is the first level, so this is this is why I got so frustrated with the game myself, and I was like, yeah. all right. This is not a buy for me. And for me at the time, because I said I lived overseas, for me to say I wanted a game means I had to beg my parents for months and then maybe get it at like one game over Christmas or my <laughs> so, birthday. Yeah. So yeah. the games were, so <clears throat> just like me, you Whenever were someone a- had to go, actually went back to the United States, you know, and, and flew back. Because you couldn't just, it was not like the internet today where you can just order something online and get it to you or even a catalog, you know. You didn't uh, know someone that was going overseas. That's where this game, that's where this magazine came in handy for me because games were so few and far between. It's not mm-hmm. like you had, like, we did like, we had a very poor family. So I had to get most of my games by watching my friend, like, going over to my friend's place and maybe borrowing a game or later on renting it. So right. seeing how to enjoy a game rather than like I don't I just don't have the ability to get this game and play with it myself right so seeing this made me like all right this game is doable I can have it in a day and get it done but that was before Mario 2 came along so I just had to watch my friends play who either through trial and error or having their own Nintendo power watch them play through the game and take their advice as I try to take on like the three-headed triclides or whatever. Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's move, let's move on to past Mario 2. Sure. Um, so they talk about Zelda, the second quest. And for those of you not familiar, the original Legend of Zelda, when you beat the game the first time, um, it allows you to, to start the game again. And uh, a lot of times this is referred to as New Game Plus these days. Um, but for this game, this is probably one of the first of its time of its kind. You can start the game again in something called the second quest, otherwise and, known uh, as hard mode. Yeah, it's um, basically the map is fairly similar um, to the to the original one, but the, where dungeons are is very different, and a lot of things that were shops before or things that helped you, like fairies in the first game, are now punishments. You were one specific guy, and they they detail it in here. Uh, you go into his room, and uh, he says something like, uh, "Either give me a heart container or pay me fifty rupees." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh I remember, I remember playing this, and, and I was just like, "Well, you're not getting any of those from me, right?" <laughs> so I tried to leave, and um, he just straight up murders you. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay. You. You, 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 gas, grass, or ass. No one yeah. leaves for free. <laughs> the uh, the door locks, and he has like these two like you know burning bushes next to him, and they just like target you and shoot you and kill you. <laughs> so, so he's Dark Moses. Yeah, he's he's the he does look like Moses actually. He's he's evil Moses. That's exactly <laughs> who he is. I I need to use this actually because I tried playing Zelda, but again mm-hmm. due to the constraints I've previously mentioned, I never actually got to play the thing to completion. I and without any narration, you know how damn hard Zelda is because it's so expansive, which is a good thing, but again, with such an open world, but with no con- no guidance, right. it's just overwhelming. I'm just like, I'm walking around, I'm getting worn down by these assholes, occasionally I find a hard container, and then I find a level, and apparently I don't have what it takes to get through it, because everything is so damn hard. Right. Well, I just remember going around through the entire game with bombs, trying to bomb every single rock and bush <laughs> Just trying to find a secret passage. You because know, there's, I mean, yeah, there's no indication, no, like, it, oh, what happens in Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, 
which is great. Not only does the higher resolution allow you to see cracks in the wall, but if you know that there's a hidden wall, you can just run along tapping it with your sword. Right. And you hear ding, 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 ding. And you're like, all right, time to whip out the hardware. And then, right. you, make a, and then you make a hole. Here, either technical limitations or just failure of creativity, <laughs> you just had to... You just have to have someone tell you, you blow up that certain rock or you move that certain tombstone. Right. Like, you have an entire square and multiple squares on the map of trial mm -hmm. and error to work with. So, did so you got to beat Zelda? Did you have help before? Or did you just, like, have a very good summer to figure it out? Um, I believe I had uh, help of some kind to in order to get through. It took me a long time. Oh, yeah. And I had to like write, you know, especially for like the Lost Woods or whatever it's called, I had to uh, write down or use the map in order to get through it. Um, it was it was difficult to get through. Oh yeah, because um, again, so, such a little context or guidance in the yeah. game. Basically, if you don't have outside help, you're mm -hmm. boned. You're, you're boned like a Stelphos. And uh, for any listeners out there, if you want to skip straight to the second quest and just go straight for hard mode. Just when you type in your name, when you enter a new game, type in Zelda as the name, and that'll start you straight off in the second quest mode, which is uh, extremely difficult and kind of, it was for me, I mean, sure, in today's world, there's people that love to love a challenge, but for me, I was just like, all right, that's enough. This is ridiculous. I'm moving on. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, okay, I'm ex like, especially if you try to earn it through the first quest first, and you're like, okay, this was big. Where, where's the payoff? And then... Right you immediately don't have much time to recover. Mm -hmm. And then they're just like, hey, let's make it even more difficult. So this second, so this coverage really helps. And because the maps are pretty much the same, I think that you could use this to play through the first quest, but it will be a little inaccurate. Right. Yeah, the locations of everything are different, but you can but at least see the layout of the, of the game. They are good enough to tell you that this is where level two used to be. So, right, yeah. that's true. All right, anything uh, else on Zelda I, Second Quest? Uh, the one thing I have to mention mm -hmm. is the end where it shows level nine. It uh, shows a big question mark on the overworld map. Mm -hmm. You know, for something that's supposed to be in depth coverage, they really cheap out at the hardest friggin' part. They show you the over the dungeon map. But not in, not in detail, just the silhouette, and you get to see it's Ganon's head. Yep. And they tell you that you don't get it, you don't get in if you don't have the eight pieces of the Triforce with Evil Moses guarding it. <laughs> right. And it says Ganon waits for you. This is a monstrous labyrinth with forty six rooms. Now, forty six rooms. Kudos on you for pushing the technical limits of the game. And giving us such an expansive place to uh, play around with. But shame on you, Nintendo Power Magazine, for not showing us these 46 friggin' rooms, because that's a lot of trial and error. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is this is where I really need you to have my back. And you're just like, it's just like your friend is priming you up for a fight. Like, okay, you push that bully, I got your back, I got your back, I got your back. And then, like, he'll throw in a punch or two, but as soon as the bully's friend comes in, that's when you're just like, okay, man, it's all you, it's all you. I got your back, man, it's all you. How can you, how can you have my back if it's all me? I think they probably gave up at this point trying to beat the game. They're like, all right, we got to print <laughs> this thing, let's get it out there. Miyamoto's <laughs> not answering our phone calls. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but they did finish the page since it's not going to be covering the level, which would be helpful, right. what it does tell you is, did you defeat Ganon successfully? Are you waiting for more exciting action, right. danger, and adventure? Sell Get me. ready. Because Zelda 2 is coming. Zelda 2? Yep. The Adventures of Link. Wow. Tell me more. <laughs> the overworld. You will be traveling to a far more vast overworld. Oh. And do you like spells? How about, do you have real fighting scenes? Oh, well, you bet. You bet. Instead of just looking over Link's head, now you can see him stab people in the face from the side. Oh, nice. Well, that sounds exciting. I can't wait to go over that uh, in issue four. <laughs> and would you, would, you, would you like to talk to people who probably have mental illness? No, not at all. <laughs> well, too bad, because you're going to greet a villager who calls himself a mistake. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> 
All right. Oh, the, we got to talk about the centerfold of the of the magazine. Oh, the three page map. So the this big... is the yeah. Did you notice the bat signal by the way? Hmm. Was you, it? No, no, not, not the not the. Uh, if you skip past the rest of uh, Zelda, and you go to the centerfold map um, poster. So every yes, Nintendo the... Power, for listeners out there who haven't opened Nintendo Power, every Nintendo Power had a three page fold out centerfold poster that you could Where... tear out or take the staples out of the poster and, and they deliver the they deliver the goods. So the the first issue they'd mentioned baseball on the front cover briefly and now they're they're really bringing it home. They've got this big poster of a uh player throwing a baseball among uh, wearing other things. <laughs> yeah, wearing a Nintendo <laughs> uniform so you know he's from the best team, he's from the Nintendo team. And uh, there's a baseball, a bat flying. There's a smushed baseball. There's a he, hot dog. There's, he's th- he's throwing a baseball among other things. There's peanuts. There's three different uh, baseball video games. Um, and then below him, he's just floating in the air above like a stadium. Yeah, yeah. he's like a, a massive super. <laughs> he's like the god of of throwing things. He is throwing food, packing peanuts, a uh, Jaleco bases loaded, RBI yep. baseball from Tengen and another one, I believe it's yeah. Official license major league baseball from Mm -hmm. the video game from the angry video game nerds, favorite studio, LJN. Oh, LJN. Nice (laughs) drop there. And he's got like a constellation of a, of a baseball diamond behind him in the sky for some reason. Um, Like like I said, he's, he's the God. He's the God of of, velocity. He is throwing anything, anything that can be thrown. He is surrounded by it. He empowers motion. Oh, there's a little uh, diagram next to the baseball bat that says, uh, it's like this dotted uh, graph line that says 90 degrees. Oh, and yeah. on the other side, it says hit. <laughs> so you know yep. if you got a right angle that you're going to be hitting the baseball and not just yep. hitting it, but yep. blowing it up and inside the baseball, yep. you're going to find some LJN baseball goodness yep. popping oh, out yeah. of it. And at the very bottom, we have a blimp saying home run. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how you can achieve a home run with the implement this guy is using, which is a <laughs> It looks like he's uh, swinging a red rope around. It's a Twizzler. <laughs> he's swinging a Twizzler bat. <laughs> and somehow Batman... That sounds delicious. And somehow Batman is being summoned to the scene. Mm-hmm. I I guess he's like a villain that beats people to death with a giant licorice bat. And Batman? Is, get it? Batman? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh! I think now oh. So right. the so the god of velocity is pleased, right? And and then on the next page is baseball roundup, which is more coverage on baseball games. And I don't give a crap about sports, and I give even less of a crap. I I I take it. I give inverted no. craps. <laughs> I absorb theses when it comes to sports games, especially the. Uh, well, basically Nintendo, because mm-hmm. it just gives me more room in the video store to pass over mm-hmm. to get actual games to play. So do you have anything to say about the sports? Because I'm out. Well, we can get through it pretty quickly. But I mean, what I found interesting besides there, these giant flags that say awesome graphics, pro, pro players, all star <laughs> lineup. Um, they, they're kind of doing three games together, but they're three separate baseball games released around the same time. I have to imagine and the Nintendo Power is attempting desperately to cover all three of these games at the same time. So they have multiple spreads where they are talking about uh, all three games independently about how to how to play through them. And they have sort of these crudely drawn illustrations of a coach and a pitcher uh, and a batter. So, so crude I could draw them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, going through and... You know, it's kind and of every, like they go. Well, here's batting. Here's pitching. Here's home runs. And, and uh, yeah, and every, there we go. Here's the end of the game. And here's and some screen caps. Everyone's nose is a is a hot dog, or a yeah, it's or sort a of like a like a pickle. Yeah, especially with the eyes mm-hmm. above. Then it just looks like a. Uh, <laughs> it looks like a crotch shot of a dude. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, and, so if uh, you're into that kind of thing, you should read the baseball section for sure. Because I don't give a shit. Now, the next part is the Counselor's real money. corner. The money section for me, because this is where I got, whenever I was stuck, this was always like one of the first places I would look. Oh, for now, sure. Ghosts and Goblins is the first game covered. 
Now, I tried it. I love the idea, but I just hated the difficulty of it. But uh, now, Super that hard. I have, now that I'm a bit older, I need to try it again. And I definitely need to try Zelda just so I can beat the thing and maybe use the map. And, like, it's just something I've got to do. One thing I don't have to do is the next game, Ring King, which to me looks like well, a shitty... Hold on. Before you get into Ring King, let's talk about the directions for uh, game codes back in the day. So nowadays, when you want to, you know, there's not a whole lot of cheats left in, in newer games because they made them such are so approachable. It, yeah, there's something normally you unlock it's like, or you may uh, you unlock them or you can download them. Yeah, normally it's like a it's something hidden in the game that's not necessarily that difficult to find, or you know how to do it. It's just grinding through and and yeah. doing it all. Or they're but, collectibles uh, and stuff. Right. So this one is 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 asking for how do, how do I get a stage select, which is literally just a feature of the game it's not even cheating it's just like yeah, how do i and, play a specific level and you think like, i have a limited controller so there shouldn't be too many right. inputs right mm -hmm. i have an up down left right i have select and i have start that's six buttons so i just have to tap like one or two of them and right. i should be fine right so well, this is like uh you know opening a lock uh, to a very uh, secure bank vault, essentially. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll just want to read. I'll just read this out one time, and then we'll get past it. Hold the control pad right and push the B button three times. Then push up and release. Next, push B three times. Push left, release. Then B three times again. Push down, release, and push B three more times. Then push start. Select the A or B button at this time and push start once again. Now you're on the right track. <laughs> what? Oh yeah. So even ch even cheating is a fucking is a friggin' Herculean ordeal. Man, I thought the Konami code was difficult. That's that's something out of this world. Though. Ugh. Yep. And then uh, you get to f uh, tells you how to fight the Red Devil, and uh, basically what they're giving you is a glitch, not an actual strategy because you <laughs> don't glitch. you you don't beat him. You just mm -hmm. have to find a way to hit him, knock him off screen, and then hopefully when the screen <laughs> transitions again. He's been glitched out of existence. You know what? In those, those days, be because of the difficulty, you just did what you had to do. Yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they had in a later feature issue, they have the uh, Blaster Master pause glitch in here as a way to actually beat a boss. <laughs> Honor is for the proud. You yes. are not proud. So here, yeah. I like some of the, the questions in here, like uh, about Metroid, for example. It's just, just kind of sad. It just says, in Metroid, I have a hard time finding the power-up items. I usually get wiped out before I find them. Can you help? And you kind of just want to be like, you know, if you really, that you're, that's sort of the core of the game. And if yeah. you're having problems with the core of the game, it either is not for you or go buy our like complete guide, you know? Yeah, but they're kind enough. Now for Castle's Corner, they get really in-depth and give you an entire map of the entire game. Unfortunately, it's so t so small. Each room is so tiny to fit yeah. the entire world onto this page that you need a magnifying lens to pretty much figure out, is that a ledge? But they yeah. tell you where to get the long beam, the various suit, the bomb, the ice beam, and other things. Now, And my favorite, the screw attack. <laughs> I never got to play Metroid. This is one of the big things. And uh, I saw a Let's Play of it. And mm -hmm. it looked kind of pretty challenging and difficult. So, you it's know, I got, I got to see this story, and I'm good. I'm I'm fine with my first Metroid game being Super Metroid. Mm -hmm. God bless that game. That was friggin' it was huge, but it was challenging, but not like smack you in the face and discourage you from playing it. Everything like the music, the sound effects, the footsteps. It was just a technical. If there was a video game for this, if there was a Super Nintendo game with the word Super in it, mm -hmm. man, they meant it. Oh, for sure. So what about you with Metroid? Did you take a stab at it? I have it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it was really hard. I don't think I ever um, beat it, to be honest. I actually think I got to the end, but not without some serious help. Um, I learned about a cheat. You can enter the name of the main character as your name, and it kind of skips you to the end of the game. That's the only way I ever ever got very far. Did and you honestly, ever? This is this game was kind of scary. Did you ever uh, enter? Did you ever enter in the Justin Bailey cheat? Or? That's what I meant is the Justin Bailey cheat. So you get to see somewhat naked Samus, <laughs> or at least unarmored Samus, where she kind of looks like an eighty sci-fi 
like an 80s sci-fi space fixin. Right. Like the time that always has like a gun, but it's a gun that's attached to a cable to a power pack on the back because apparently it's just that good of a blaster yeah. that it needs a massive power source. And got like the pink leather, the pink leotards with the big hair. Mm-hmm. So which makes you wonder how she crammed it in that helmet in the first place. <laughs> but again, yeah. with with it off, she looks like she belongs on the cover of like uh, Space Age or Space Race or whatever that Dragon's Lair sequel was. Right. Well, I mean, I remember being pleasantly surprised about that. I thought that was pretty cool that they they did that because you, it was surprising, um, especially yeah. for you are a young empath- adolescent as myself. Yeah. You know, you always you are, to be a, a dude. You yeah, know, you are a like, young, you are an empowered, capable independent woman mm-hmm. and you know it sends a good message and it really should have been put in other games like uh, in recent games they have like super princess peach where princess peach <laughs> has to save mario and i played the game and let me tell you i i was not afraid to get in touch with my emotions I as see. a woman and become a horrifying rage monster or a weepy mess so I have Lovely. to say I have to say that Samus was a better representation of independent women than Princess Peach was, That's since her true. her powers were crying and running, mm. <laughs> and uh, being was there also f- you know coincidentally my real life strengths as well is crying and running, <laughs> so well, often then, at the same time. Well, then there you go. So she's, her and I have a lot in common. So she's bridging the gender gaps, right? <laughs> so moving on to Super Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. Are there really unlimited one-ups? Can you tell me how to get the fireworks and what do they mean? Now, I'm surprised I didn't ask about World Negative 1, but that's really not helpful because it just glitches you into into drowning. But I could never nail the one-up on the pyramid with the Koopa going down the the pyramid Mm -hmm. and jumping on his shell and nailing the one-up ad infinitum. But uh, I used to watch other people and have them do it for me because I just didn't have the dexterity. Did yeah, you, I couldn't uh, do it either. No, you, you couldn't look into the infinite one-ups. No, I I knew someone that could do a few and then they die, you know, at a certain point. Um, but I like this note here, and in, in where it says you may want to stop building lives at around one hundred. If you get too greedy, the program has a built-in game over. So if you try and get over a hundred one-ups, it, it's game over for you. I thought that was pretty yeah. funny. Oh, it is good that they warn you about a glitch that will screw you. Now, Kid Icarus, I never played the game. I had a friend who played it, but I always watched him play it because I never got what you were doing or why. And he looked kind of stupid on the uh, old Captain N cartoon. So I just never thought, I just never saw why Kid Icarus was a decent game to play. Have you ever played it? Um, I played the uh, Game Boy game, um, funny enough, but I never never got a chance to play uh, the Nintendo version. I didn't know anyone who had it, and it was kind of like it, it came out before I, I got a Nintendo and didn't come with it, and it was kind of one of those things that just passed Pass- me by. Yeah, so I'm going to, that's another, once I start playing my Nintendo ROMs, I'm just going to have to play these classics ju- mm. just to just to get some closure on the past. Right. Now, at the bottom is a game that I immedi- I initially dismissed, but then I saw further mentions of it later on in the uh, game, and the pictures of it, at least one video, one picture of it, looks pretty cool. It's called Rygar. Now, I had never heard of this until reading this magazine, but uh, there's a picture of it where there seems to be like this uh, flying fortress mm-hmm. thing and a uh, chain of some kind, like a giant flyswatter. <laughs> yeah, I had Rygar. The game is awesome. Uh, you have a uh, shield on like a uh, um, a cable kind of thing, and it's kind of like works like a boomerang where you fling it out in front of you and it comes back to you. And uh, it has a really addictive uh, soundtrack. And they actually had it's a port of an arcade game. Actually, um, the arcade game has better graphics, same uh, soundtrack. Um, the Nez, Nez one is pretty faithful to the original. Uh, it's a great game. It's it's kind of like a mix between like a platformer, action RPG. There's some RPG elements in it. Well, can you uh, sum up the uh, plot of the game? I have no idea. 
They had you a. Uh, I, yeah. I, I played a game with that name. I uh, I played it. A lot of these games don't have. I mean, you probably have to read the manual to learn the plot. They didn't have a whole lot of exposition in the game itself. You know, you, you're searching for something. Uh, was Rygar's deal? They actually had a um, a sequel to Rygar uh, many years later for the PlayStation Two. It was called Rygar: The Legendary Adventures, I think. Um, and it was totally 3D. It was uh, amazing. They did a really faithful update to the game and you know gave it story and all kind of thing. Uh, it's all um, backed in, in, in Greek mythology. Um, so if you ever have, haven't checked out the PS2 version of that, that's pretty good. Now, the next game is a very prominent game that even I heard of, except I never got to play it because I just never got to own the game but it's just one of these things I got to tackle, Castlevania. Now, did you ever try the Castlevania series on the NES? Yeah, I had uh, friends with Castlevania One, and uh, it was pretty hard, but it's a good good game. It was fun. Never had it for myself. They have friends with Castlevania Two, and that was near impossible. It was uh, very that, difficult. That's the one introduction I had to the series, and after trying to play it or having the uh, day and night change on me. Mm-hmm. I was just like, I don't know what the deal is with this game. It seems like it could be good, but it's it's just punishing me more than rewarding me. It is. And yeah. I gave up on the series. I, it was sad to judge it because it was the weakest entry, but it was the one I had the experience with because it's the one my friend had. So I gave up on it, except when, once again, Super Castlevania. <laughs> and when that game came out, the graphics, I was just like, I got to get a hold of this. And when I rented it, oh my gee. This <laughs> game, friggin' I loved horror, Dracula, mummies, vampires, werewolves, Frankenstein. And this game brought it all with a kick-ass soundtrack uh, that was Mode 7 graphics of bosses that would like yep. rotate when they die. And I was just blown away. Like the clocks, the stairs. It was everything that... The NES should have delivered to me, but without all the punishing, horrible awfulness that this game delivered. And Super well, Castlevania can't recommend that one enough. It's a shame you you didn't uh, experience Castlevania Three, which is actually my favorite of a lot of the Castlevania games. Uh, not as much as Symphony of the Night, but that's a whole different level. Of uh, the original ones, Castlevania Three is probably my favorite. Um, you get to play as different characters, and there's a branching storyline. Um, it's, it's it is difficult, but it's it's rewarding. I my experience with Castlevania Three was somewhat positive, but from a distance. I saw Dwayne and Brando's cover of Final Fantasy Three, and the music in it from one to from one place to another is just exhilarating and awesome. And watching other uh, uh, video coverage, like, because sometimes they amp up the music for their rap videos, but mm-hmm. seeing what this, uh, seeing the music in its raw form for the Nintendo, and, like, it was just so rocking and fantastic. I'm just like, I- is this Nintendo sound? Because there wasn't too many problems with the Nin- with Nintendo. They did a lot with their limitations. Mm-hmm. But even even the rock like symphonic rock, almost metal soundtrack to number three, it just seemed unreal. Like, it couldn't be this good. Okay, so Ikari Warriors. There's nothing we can say here that wasn't mentioned in the Angry Video Game Nerds review. This game is awful, and the only thing worse than the game's unrelenting difficulty was the stage select, where... (laughs) It even tells you you have to go fast because <laughs> it doesn't. It barely gives you enough time to input all the commands, and I'm not going to tell you what they are. You just have to watch the nerd figure it out. It is that's funny, fantastic, and it's got one of the best songs in in, in nerd history. Now, by nerd you mean the angry video game nerd, right? Yep, James. Uh, forgot his last name, but. The Angry Video Game Nerd. Mm-hmm. Now, Mike Tyson's punch out is. But hold on, but back to Akari Warriors. Um, this game's only worth playing if you either know the continue uh, a code, which is over here, 
or if you play on the original arcade version and you have a ton of quarters. Uh, it's an arcade <laughs> port, and it is pretty fun, but it is a total quarter eater. Um, and it's kind of like just sort of like a scrolling version of a top-down version of Contra, where you're constantly dying and getting shot, and you have to put it in another quarter to continue. So, yeah, there's there's other games like that where you do right. the scrolling overhead where you take on a massive army, you collect power-ups, you get hit, and you lose all of them and have to try to scramble before right. you get murderized in your weakened state. I do wonder if the continue code was a uh, a met, was a, a nice gl- uh, glance at the uh, creator's favorite disco group because it's ABBA. <laughs> Dancing Queen. (laughs) And the final coverage, the final covered game is Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Now, I felt this because, god damn it, this guy pulverized me. I was Evander Holyfield's ear. This guy (laughs) just chewed me up and spit me out. Now, if I had this issue, I would have won the belt. I would have been, I, I would have had this thing put to bed. But as soon as I start it, I'm just mentally exhausted from beating Glass Joe, the uh, Turkish bull guy, King Hippo, mm-hmm. uh, Don Flamenco. I am just exhausted. My palms mm-hmm. are sweaty. And then this guy comes up. And before I can get used to him, bam, 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 down for the count. And he's doing that friggin' winking thing with the gap tooth. And he's just dancing around. And I'm trying right. to get up and staggering. And then he's just like, oh, did you come up with the mayor? Bam. And then he's just like, there, that's where you go, because you're a loser. And <laughs> Mike Tyson impression is pretty good, i got to say. <laughs> Thank you. I, I try to do it very good, because, you know, if I don't, then, you know, people might start laughing at me. Nice. So <laughs> this tells you how to beat Tyson. Now, it says, like, you do it by using, by knocking out his ability to use his dynamite punch. Don't let him land one in the first minute and a half and around. So, essentially, this is just like fighting the real Mike Tyson, because the key is, don't let him knock you out. Mm-hmm. Watch for Which, when he winks. Yeah, yeah. Don't let him knock you out. And okay. uh, essentially, the key to beating him is just like how actual fighters beat him, by tiring him out. Because the mm. real Mike Tyson has asthma. So, mm. he had to put all of his power into his initial attacks, so that the fight doesn't last long because he would start losing breath, getting dizzy, and the arms would come down. And those are how he lost his actual hmm. matches, by getting tired and they pulverized him. And if, you f- and if you fight him as you would the real Tyson, by defending and dodging until he wears himself out, then he becomes viable to be defeated. Yeah, I, so, I couldn't even get past uh, Soda Pop Joe or whatever his name was. You couldn't get past Soda Popinski? No, I couldn't even get past Soda Popinski in this game. I had it, and I thought it was fun, but it was it was hard. I couldn't I, I couldn't get past Soda Pop. Oh man, this was <laughs> this I had was friends a, I could get get to Tyson. This was the game I, I could get to, I could get to the game, and then he just friggin' beat me like I owed him money. Nice. So this is the end of the Kessler's Corner, and I think we'll be wrapping up this episode. It was quite a chat, and uh, to keep these episodes small, we'll see if we can review one episode per, or maybe it'll be two episodes per. And uh, the last part... Yeah, the the early magazines, because they're bi-monthly, might be twice as big as the later Mm -hmm. ones. And the first issue especially just has a lot of meat to it. So I think we we owe it another... another, another, uh, full hour or so, so to, to get through it so next episode we will be discussing we will be starting off with howard and nestor a staple for those who remember nintendo power magazine they would be like hey you got a magazine full of information tips and tricks here's a comic with information tips and tricks and a little bit of humor and mm-hmm. it was a very we'll get into that at the beginning of this uh at the beginning of episode one, part two, or episode two, whatever. We'll 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 figure it out later. Part two, uh, as they call it. So, Mike, yeah. how can they get a hold of us in the meantime? Well, we are on Facebook at the Playing With Power podcast on Facebook. And you can send us an email at playingwithpowerpodcast at gmail.com. I'll work on a Twitter later. 
<laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, so please send us any ideas, comments you have. If you, t- if you found us, let us know how you found us. Uh, we're just starting out, so pre- appreciate you listening in and sticking with us. <laughs> if you found us before we release episode two, yeah, that's uh, not likely. <laughs> that's not likely. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, let's sign off. I'm Mike. And I'm Ben. And now you're playing with power. <laughs> Welcome to the Playing With Power podcast, part two of issue one. I'm your host, Mike, and you are? I am Ben. It's good to be back. How you doing this week, Mike? I uh, had a sore throat. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to make the deadline, but I just stared at my throat. The old moneymaker was gave... hurting, huh? Yep. Yeah. My dulcet tones may not have... Uh, May not have been able to get to you this week, but I did it. I looked at my throat in the mirror and just willed it away. You powered through it for the fans, of which we had zero. Damn eight. right. I did it for all zero fans. Did it for all you zeros out there. Well, we're back on uh, uh, July of 1988 on issue one, part two. And we left off on page 55 in Nintendo Power. We're going over the very first Howard and Nestor comic. What would you give it uh, star-wise? If you had to rate it between one and five stars, this particular comic, out of all the Howard and Nestors you've read over the years, how many stars would you give it and why? I remember the mag- I remember the future comics being a little more helpful than this. This one seemed like... He gave, like, somewhat good advice, but it was already in the magazine. And he even mentions it, like, uh, the guy's playing, Nestor is playing Zelda. And Howard walks up and says, ah, you should have found levels 8 and 9 by now. Oh, I'm just messing around. I know where they are. I can't find them. I bet you've forgotten where they are. You think you're so smart. Are you kidding? Level 8 is hidden in the second screen up, third from the right, under the tree in the path. Now, what does this mean? Yeah, Howard is kind of a know-it-all asshole, I gotta say. I know, he's kind of (laughs) friggin' smug. And he doesn't even, like, none of this tells you, like, well, if you read, if you paid attention in the game, they told you to go here. Because, again, Zelda, I don't recall it giving much in-game context. Like, you need outside help to play this. You need, like, a map that came with the game. Uh, which I doubt came with the game because, you know, Nintendo, why would they be helpful? But, uh, (laughs) and then he's like, oh, I didn't check that tree. Of course you didn't because nothing in the game said there wasn't even a signpost or, you know, you talk about saving the land of Hyrule. I don't even know why you would because it's all full of monsters and shit. There's no people except for old men in caves. (laughs) You're like, you, Link is the last generation of, of a, of an extinct people. All that's left is well. I think that two uh, old men. He would let Hyrule rot if it wasn't for Zelda, right? I, I think he already did. Did you see that first tree you go into? It's just a friggin' desiccated ruin, and like there's no people, no village. There's no like Kokoriko village. Nobody telling you. Oh wow! Well, I hope that no one goes into the graveyard. You know, I noticed a lo- I noticed a loose tombstone on the uh, on the third one in the second row. You know, nothing in the game tells you what you need to get around because you're in a dead world. I mean, like, even if he did, even if he did reproduce with Zelda, I mean, good. Now your children will have to be inbred to make a, to make a third generation. Like, ugh, it's... Ah, anyways, Zelda, so, the inbred version. <laughs> that explains why that other guy's walking around going, I am error. 
Now you know why. <laughs> he's yep. he's Link's bas he he's Link's bastard grandson nephew. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so Howard, so Howard then tells him that level nine is under a rock in the sixth screen from the left on the top. Use the map on page thirty five and six of this magazine. I should have looked there. Ness replies. So, if he's using the magazine as a reference point, again, you're saying how the game designers failed to provide any in-game help. And two, even Ness doesn't read Nintendo Power. Right. Well, here's the thing that, that is the true rib for me, is that Howard Phillips is, quote, the president of the Nintendo Fun Club. So Howard Phillips is actually a real dude, and uh, he was hired on as a spokesperson for Nintendo in the late 80s. And um, he was actually the editor in chief of Nintendo Power for for several years during its formative years. So this guy is essentially in charge of writing those pages of the magazine. And then after the fact, in the same magazine, he's like, "Oh, I bet you didn't read the magazine I just that I wrote. You should go look at it." You know, <laughs> no, and just like, going like, seriously, dude, <laughs> just stroking his, just stroking himself right there. <laughs> right. But still, tell me, tell me about the Nintendo Fun Club. Because apparently this was the predecessor to Nintendo Power, but how did it uh, how did it come to be? Yeah, they had uh, basically they had a um, a fan club, um, and they only had um, a few issues that they were del started delivering um, uh, quarterly, starting in the winter of nineteen eighty seven. So they delivered seven issues total of this Nintendo Fun Club news. And I haven't been able to find any copies of it, so I don't really know how, know how long it was. But it was, it was more like tips and tricks and Nintendo video game news and a couple of comics. And it was it was sent um, to, 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 to the fan club, essentially. The fun club was the Nintendo fan club. Um, and um, so once they got through about two years of this, um, they finally decided to make it a real thing. And that morphed into Nintendo Power, where they could start charging subscriptions. So, if you actually look at um, the scans for the front cover of issue one of Nintendo Power, the, it actually there's a variant that says "free sample." So, the free sample was sent to every member of the Nintendo Fun Club, which was uh, their fan club again. So, if you remember, you got the first issue free, get a little taste of the real action, and then you had to subscribe for. I don't know, twenty bucks a year, whatever it was back then, to get into well, the power worth. on a bi-monthly basis. Well, it's worth it because the magazine is freaking great. If it was mediocre, we'd be, do, we'd be doing. We'd be it's doing required reading for some of these games. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's freaking mandatory for again Zelda, because unless you've got someone who played the game, good luck going into this game blind and letting the game tell you what to do. Now right. that this. Uh, so this was the Howard fan club. Did he have any affiliation with Nintendo itself or just like, you know, like he was like the most popular yeah. fan? No, he, I don't know if they, if he had any affiliation with them before he got hired, but he got, he got hired on as a spokesperson and, and uh, he was the, one of the first quote unquote game masters, whatever that means. Um, <laughs> but um, he's responsible for the comics. Uh, Howard and Nestor, he's responsible for the character Nestor. Nestor was the um, the mascot of Nintendo Power for many years until they swapped him out for Mario in the late 90s. Because hmm. yeah, I remember there was like Howard and Nestor and then eventually just became Nestor Comics. Right, because Howard like, left the company after like four years, so... And and they, they, they lost the rights to draw his likeness? I don't know about that. Either that or they just were just like, why are we honoring this dude? You know? I don't know, because he like friggin' created a magazine and like helped out in S because apparently he's stupid and doesn't read the magazine. <laughs> you know, you got you, you, you gotta give props to this guy. He he he's he's pulling all the weight around here. I guess, yeah. At least in the well, beginning, that's yeah, it was his yeah. baby. Well, that's it for Howard and Ness. Now we've been introduced to the magazine, to this uh, comic. We can just, you know, read them on a uh, person, on a uh, comic by comic basis. And we can now move mm -hmm. on to classified information. I loved 
this mm-hmm. section. Loved the manila envelope. Loved that everything was just summed up neatly, and they could cram like three or four games into this uh, into each page. Now, the mm-hmm. first game they cover from Agent One, whoever that is, was for mm-hmm. ice hockey. And this sounds like masturbation advice. Pull the goalie and go for it. <laughs> Pulling the goalie and go for it. That's when you want to make a baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's when you stop pulling the goalie and you just go for the net. Ugh. And uh, yeah. then they cover. So did you have any ice hockey experience, whether real or in the game? Uh, no, I only played uh, Blades of Steel for the NES. Yeah, I wasn't a uh, a sports game player either. Best ice hockey game mm-hmm. ever. And then there's Rad Racer, Get on the Fast Track. But, you know, I got my own... Uh, it says here, the final scene has a surprise of its own. Use the tachometer trick to see it. But I never played the game, so I don't care. Now, basically, basically everything on this first page is needless to me like there's athena which i never heard of have you played athena never heard of athena i had red racer is hard now they're talking about finding a map they're, fi- they're talking about finding a magic mushroom and when i saw the tiny screen grab from this i thought for sure this was like some secret level to super mario world but uh that's all i have to say Next is Contra. Now, this is a prominent game, and they talk about mm-hmm. the uh, the starting your game over, starting your game with over thirty extra men with the extra mm-hmm. life command. Now, that's the famous Konami code. Yes, it is the code. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. B A start. And I saw this uh, this hilarious painting of the last supper and jesus and the apostles each have their fingers going like up up down down left right left right and another guy making a b and an a (laughs) and i just thought you know if jesus used that like that's why jesus was resurrected because he used that code to continue (laughs) okay that covers the blasphemy (laughs) section of classified information nice well, a, friend, a buddy of mine recently asked me a question. He's he, out of the blue. You know, he sent me a text and he said, "I bet I made a bet with my girlfriend, who is a, little, a few years younger than than we are." And he said, oh, "Do you know the Konami code?" You know, and I of course just texted him right back. I knew by heart. And he's like, "I won! I win!" Of course, every guy our age knows the Konami code. They know it. You know, yeah. It's just embedded in our brains. <laughs> Yep, it's just one of those things. Now, Contra, did you play Contra? Yeah, I played Contra. I have Contra. It's awesome. It's have one of the better games it? you can play on the Nintendo. Uh, with the, with the uh, with the uh, Konami code for sure. <laughs> well, of course, because because if you're going to play, you got to play with power. No, oh, yeah. I never got. I never played this game, but I'm loading it onto my DS cart. And hopefully it'll mm-hmm. work with hopefully it'll work. And damn right I'm gonna start off with the Konami code. And this is gonna be one of those games I've decided it's time to catch up and get some closure on my past, so I'll be playing these games and in future magazines I'll be letting you know my progress. Okay. Well uh, Contra was a another arcade port and a very very faithful arcade port actually, so it it's a little bit different the transferings from from the transfers from from putting a game on an arcade to being at home because at home you can't exactly just shove another quarter into the machine to keep going whereas that was the whole point of a lot of these um, you know games all this time was to get quarter eaters so I think they kind of the game developers probably built in these kind of things going okay we know it's really hard because the point is to eat quarters so here's a code that allows you to get the equivalent of 30 quarters in the game, you know, or however, whatever it cost. Um, and I, I think that's why they, they put some of these cheats in here just cause it was 
so difficult to try and get through the game on a single, you know, token, essentially. Do we know if this, uh, I wonder if that code worked on the arcade machine. <coughs> I seriously doubt it. Uh, and I don't think it's been a staple of every port either. In fact, they had a recent port on, on Android and iOS devices and I tried it out and, um, it, it, it was not terribly faithful to the original. They had like redone the graphics. I wasn't a big fan of it. And they put in a bunch of like, um, um, uh, what you call it when you have the freemium games where you have to pay for stuff. So when you die, it's like, Oh, pay us money. I'm like, Oh, this is back to being an arcade game again. We have to give them more money. <laughs> <laughs> to play, keep playing. They, said, they said the arcade machines were dying. They're on your phone yeah. now. I'm like, Oh, I thought I played this game almost, almost 30 years ago. Why, why should I have to pay more? <laughs> you know, uh, next is gun smoke. Now I didn't play this game either but one thing i noticed is that the word gun smoke in this magazine oh it has a uh, a period between gun and smoke and that's hmm. what it shows on the uh the title screen gun dot smoke now i never played this game but apparently it's like a western and they tell you how to get a machine gun so the idea of mm -hmm. having a machine gun in the wild west just sounds like you know, like if you had a friggin', if you had a chain gun at the Battle of Helm's Deep, you could be like, I'm the single guy that's going to turn the tide and own this place. Now, have you ever played Gunsmoke? No, I have no experience with Gunsmoke. Well, that, I wonder if it was one of those Zapper game. games that I never got. <clears throat> it might be, but it looks, well, if you can, no, you can enter in like, you press the A button four times and the select button. So it looks like it's not a shooter game in the sense of using the zapper. Hmm. But because I can't imagine like having a machine gun on the zapper because, I mean, does that thing even respond <laughs> if you hold the trigger down or does it only respond like with each click? Yeah, you like, can't hold the trigger down because it just, it's, the spring on, like unloads basically. So you, it actually automatically makes you click it again. You can't like hold it down. It's not like a today's triggers on an Xbox controller or something where you hold it down. It's got some variance to it. No, nope. so Gunsmoke, you and I will have to play this Gunsmoke to see which one of us can be the best gun. Okay. In the in the in the podcast, this podcast this podcast the ain't big enough. This podcast ain't big enough for both of us. Now, next All is right. Mike Tyson's Mike Tyson's Punch Out, Another World Circuit, and it's in in the game. It even says Another World Circuit. So, I like the concept of this, but it's just the same game, but all the guys are shuffled around, which, like you, your first opponent will be King Hippo, when you um, <laughs> King Hippo in the uh, first. In the first quest of Punch Out, is uh, I believe he's the first guy in one of the uh, the heavyweight bouts. Now, I think this is a missed opportunity because you know this is just like Zelda second quest, where it's just like let's just scramble everything instead of giving them a new experience. Now, mm -hmm. I thought it would be friggin' great if you could if you could have punched out aliens. Punched out aliens. Like it's another world. Oh, makes sense. Wouldn't it be great to see like one of those gray aliens with the big black eyes and the tiny and the tiny spindly arms, but with big gloves? Yeah, they them? have like a punching bag for a head, basically. Yeah, that would be friggin'. I mean, it's it's called another world. I would have loved to seen different aliens. Like you could fight like a Chewbacca ripoff, an Ewok. Like it doesn't have to be Star Wars, mm -hmm. but it can be like it can be like just outside of the realm of copyright infringement. You could fight like the Great Gazoo, and if you lose, he calls you a dum dum. <laughs> like, like there's right. just yeah, this could have it could have benefited from actually living up to the name Another World. But uh, no, you don't fight aliens. You just fight everyone in a different order because apparently the, the Other World is a world where a clerical error screws up the ranking system. <laughs> And uh, next is... Should we move, should we move on past... Um, 
Well, do you I know the rest of these games? Have you played any Arachnoid or Ring King or? Any? Well, I got uh, just a few things, to, like just like one or two things to say about the rest. Arkanoid. I didn't know what it was, but I, I saw the picture of it. It's Breakout. Okay, just admit it. Now, next is <laughs> Ring King. Steve Jobs is... called. He wants his. Uh, well, Steve called. Steve Jobs called from the grave. He said he wants his game back. <laughs> he created Breakout. Did he make Breakout? Am I right? I thought I, so. Hmm. I'm going to have to verify that later. Next is Ring King, the poor I'll man's punch out. That's all I have to say. Next is Ninja Kid. Now, I'm looking at the screenshot for Ninja Kid, and the boy seems to be basically a top. Because he has no legs, they just come together in the middle to form a point. So I guess he's like a uh, w- one of those things that kids play with uh, Beyblades. Like you just wind them up and spin them around. That's what this guy is. A and, dreidel? Uh, yeah. Well, not <laughs> no Beyblades is like some toy, but essentially he's got the blue and white, like the uh, like the Hebrew colors. So yeah, you've nailed it. You, you summed it up. Mm-hmm. It's the Adventures of Dreidel Boy. And uh, no, uh, you dreidel, know, he dreidel, was dreidel. I made him <laughs> out of clay by dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I will with kick this game, you like I a ninja. I don't know how it goes. But with this game, I won't play. Like I mean, like if he's That's a dreidel, right. this should, if he's a dreidel, this should have been called Ninju Kid. Then I made it. Then I would have played it. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> Now, yeah. next game is Zanuck. Probably would have turned more of a profit, too. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like, come on. The people who would have bought it, you know they're rich. Come on. <laughs> okay, no reason. Zanuck uh, sleep drug? I know, Zanuck. My dog hasn't put me on it yet. Uh, from the top, it looks to be like <laughs> another one of those uh, scrolling shooter playing games with bombs and... You collect power ups, and all of a sudden, it just completely con- changes the configuration of your of your plane on the fly. So without having to take it back to base and retrofit it, you now shoot lasers instead of bullets, because that's how planes work. Now that we co- now that covers classified information. Now, now is Double Dragon. Hell yes, I played this game. I believed I beat it. Yep. And I didn't have this magazine to do it, but uh, the versatility of this game for just two frigging buttons, all you have is the BA button on the mm-hmm. on the controller and the directional pad. And with this, you can punch, headbutt, elbow punch, uppercut, pin attack, kick, over shoulder throw, jump kick, spin kick, low kick, and then hair pulling, because why not throw some hockey moves in there? And it, uh, now, before we get further into this game, what about you? What are your thoughts on Double Dragon? Oh, I love Double Dragon. It's a arcade port again, and um, it, this is probably one of the more iconic versions of it on the NES. And um, I, having played some of the ports, I would say the music is best on Nintendo. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just nostalgia for me, but. Um, it's it's an amazing game, but I, th- I find it funny that they, they list out all the ways you can attack someone. In reality, when you're actually playing, you're like mashing the shit out of those buttons and like praying that <laughs> it's you can all, get it's all random. some of the some of the kicks and attacks, you know. And like oh, yeah. you can get that spin kick where you stand in the air and you swing your kicks around. You're like, oh yeah, I did it, you know. Or you do the one where you grab someone by the head and you throw them. You're like, oh look what I did, dude. You know, this was always fun to play with another person, and this is one of the few uh, cooperative games uh, that were available early on in Nintendo's life cycle. So this was a big hit for me, as was uh, number two and three of these. And I, I honestly wish they would bring back this um, uh, this franchise more today, because um, I think it has a really rich history. Oh man, with all the but, although with all the buttons on the uh, modern controllers, I think you'd have like 120 distinct attacks. I mean, look what <laughs> right. they were able to do with just two buttons. <laughs> this this shit will go up exponentially. But uh, <laughs> oh man, I a hundred moves. 
and you and you can do it all with one hand. But uh, mm-hmm. one thing I learned from I lo- from reading this article here is that some of the some of the uh, enemies actually have names, and um, I don't oh, yeah. know if they listed them in the game, and they might have, but. Um, they, yeah, they keep mentioning uh, like uh, I think the whip oh, oh, girl oh. is Linda. Yeah, the girl with the whip is Linda, and they they make it th- seem like when they when they wrote the article that there's only one Linda. It's like yeah, you can clearly see even in the screenshots here, there's more than one Linda. They all can't be named Linda. Well, now that, thanks for joining our gang. Your new name is Linda. Here's a whip. <laughs> you're a just, chick. <laughs> if you if you're a chick, you're a Linda. Yeah. And when you're a Linda, you're a Linda all the way. That's right. You get a whip, <laughs> and your name is Linda. When you join our gang, I love the I love the gender equality that you beat these women just as mercilessly as you do the men. It's like no no chivalry <laughs> when you're a street fighter. You just someone comes at you with a whip, you friggin' pull their hair, give them a give them a nose job with your kneecap, and send them on their way. Oh, that was the best part. It was like if they're whipping you, you you kick them, you knock them down. And then you can grab their whip and whip them back. Give them, a, give them a taste of their own medicine. That was probably the best part of this game. You're like, oh, oh the, no way. The retribution. In the game, you know, they just hold on to oh, the, the whip or like be part of their character or whatever. And like, yeah, they, 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 they fall down drop holding it and you the can whip. Use it. Right. Oh, the retribution. It's like, screw you. I'm going to give you a taste of your own medicine. Whack, whack, whack. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Well, I remember at least in for many of the Double Dragons, because of the only having two buttons, you didn't have a dedicated uh, jump button. You had to do some like you had to mash both A and B at the same time and press often press a direction, and you had to time it perfectly. And some of the later missions in the game, and they they mention it here a little briefly. They'll show a screenshot where you had to make these difficult platforming jumps. Were always the most frustrating part of the game. Because you'd be going through, you'd be doing good, you know, beating up guys and whatnot. And then you get to this little platforming area and try to jump over the smallest jump and just fall down a hole. And then it'd be game over. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so. again, in typical Nintendo Power fashion, the final mission, mission four, where's the, where's the, where's the map coverage? Mm-hmm. Nope. They'll tell you it's divided into three sections, and there's only two scenes on the last map. But you will meet all of Double Dragon's bad characters, including the evil Shadow Boss. This is the ultimate test. Except this is a test with no study materials, because they don't tell you what the hell the Shadow Boss is going to do to you, or how the hell you beat him. So, you know, just look, watch Howard luck. Phillips will pop up in a. Just wait, Howard <laughs> Phillips will pop up in a later comic and be like, ah, oh, you should have read our coverage in issue. 23, or I go over this in detail. <laughs> and, and you should also... But one other thing I did, I did read in here was... So, um, one of the bosses, one of the mini-bosses in this game is called a Bobo, and it's like this huge guy with his gigantic uh, pumpkin head kind of guy. He's <laughs> just, he'll just beat you mercilessly, right? So, and the first time you fight him, there's this handy conveyor belt that if you fall on it, you'll fall off the edge and you'll die, Right? So, of course, the strategy is to get a Bobo on this damn conveyor belt to get him to fall off the edge. And you can win that way, right? And um, <laughs> Nintendo Power says, don't take the easy way out. And um, it says, if you fight them, you can move up a level with the points you earn in battle. And I just remember, I read this, and I was like, wait a minute, there's levels? Like, you can, it's like an RPG? I can l- level up Billy and, and Jimmy? Or I don't remember Billy that. Billy and Jimmy as the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that at all. I don't remember. Do you remember? That, do you remember? I, just, I just remember punching the shit out of people, kicking, pressing random buttons, and just just randomizing my way through this game. Yeah, if there was any leveling up, it was not apparent to the user at all. This is the first I've I've heard of this. But you do fight two uh, two cavemen called Chintai's, and apparently they're just like shirtless hippies. Oh, of course. And then I like the, I like the end. Who is Shadow Boss, and where is Marion, your girlfriend? Although if you're if well, you're the uh, was it two brothers, right? If you're their brother, like <coughs> do they really care that much? Yeah, like you're, I guess well, you're going for your brother. Like, yeah, you're just doing it for your brother, <laughs> not the girl. Like screw you. But 
Like, who is the Shadow Boss? You know what? You could have told us who the Shadow Boss is because you're the game magazine. So, yeah. now, moving on to the next game, Gauntlet. Warrior needs food. Mm-hmm. Uh, all I can say is the music in this game was fantastic. And uh, I enjoyed hearing it in MC Chris's The Tussin. Uh, you must have heard that song. Oh, is that where it comes from? Yeah. yeah. That's funny. I never, I never made a connection. Uh, one of my friends had Gauntlet, and uh, I played it with him for a while. But it's it's fairly repetitious, you mean. And it's not terribly fun unless you have multiple people to play with. And I, I think from what I remember is this is one of the few games that use the multi-tap that allows you to play with up to four people, I believe. Because you have and Thor the Warrior, them. the Valkyrie, the Wizard, and you have the Elf. And, you know... I would always be the wizard because who doesn't want to shoot at things rather than just walk up and slam them. So I always, I always liked being. But the, uh, it's uh, another arcade port and a quarter eater. I always liked being the quarter the uh, the close quarters guy because almost every Nintendo game that had magic, that shit ran out. So I was just instinctively, <laughs> you you can't run out of an axe as long as you don't throw it. So I'll just stick with the weapon that will still be in. That, that I can still use in two minutes' time. Not when I'm pinned up against the wall and I'm like, oh, shit, I'm out of mana. Like, s- nope. So I never tried the <laughs> uh, the wizard or anything. Like, Nintendo just instinctively told me, anything that should be limited, stay away from it. Just stick with the one thing you'll still have. But That's was that rule. true? Did you, did you uh, run out of magic as the wizard, or was it just infinite lightning bolts? I don't think so. I think you just have infinite like in bolts. It's just like a constant barrage of of bullets coming out from them. You can do pop, you know, power ups, just like in the the fighter plane games, where you can ha- shoot two things at a time or three things at a time or whatever. But uh, if you get I hit loved, once, I, like, loved, I think you're dead. I loved how this screen like it wasn't just like uh, most Nintendo games where it's a solid square and you just move to the mm-hmm. edge and then you find and then it uh, sweeps to another square. I love that. Like this must have been a techno a technological ordeal on this game because it seemed like the graphics fairly decent and the music was good and they have managed to have so many moving enemies on the screen and because this wasn't hard enough the entire map always moves with you at the center of it and you know yeah. even as a kid you're not too interested in too much of the technological parts. But even as a kid, you're like, oh my gosh, this map is huge and everything's moving and it turns and it tilts and turns when you do. And like everything was just like this was a visual treat and the music was addictive. So even though it, mm-hmm. it could it could get away with not having much else because it had challenge, a horde of enemies that makes you feel like a friggin boss when you when you take them down and their uh, and their creature generators. And you just go into that uh, that portal and like. Now, did you ever play mm-hmm. the uh, the later versions of Gauntlet, like in the uh, like the uh, two thousand and four or two thousand and one arcade game? Because I remember when I was in college in um... two thousand and one, there was a lot uh, uh, a high def like a graphical um, contemporary version of Gauntlet, and. Pretty much the same, but much better graphics, and uh, you could uh, take it like shoot enemies in their castles, and it was a uh, it was a pretty good game. Did you play that, or just the uh, the place uh, the uh, Xbox three hundred and sixty version, or was it? I think I played 2? a little bit of both. Um, the arcade one was okay, but um, I never didn't, didn't play it that much. But yeah, I played the Xbox three hundred and sixty one. And that was okay, but it wasn't anything to write home about. You know, it was just sort of yeah, an average it, it was, game. It was, you could tell they it was just a game. bought the Gauntlet franchise, and they're like, "Oh, I'm going to slap a Diablo clone in here and be done with it." You know. <laughs> so that's pretty much all no. I did. It was a cash in. Okay. Now next is. So moving on, we've got uh, Contra. Right, we've got Contra again. 
<clears throat> the, which we've already the talked obvious, about ad nauseum. And they've got some interesting obvious, maps in here. Uh, the first oh yeah. level and second and they level show the, and third uh, level. Third level, or zone three, because apparently this was the precursor mm -hmm. to Sonic, where the areas are called zones, <laughs> and waterfall, where you have to fight mm -hmm. <laughs> basically the devil xenomorph. Because it's the alien from Aliens, yeah. but now he's got devil horns and he's red. So I guess when evil xenomorphs die, they go to hell and they're judged by the Xeno Devil. And now you have to oh, fight you know him because apparently you're you're an alien hell. Well, what's interesting actually is that you look into the screenshot that's ne this underneath where it says Zone Three Waterfall, but that is actually one of the last bosses in the game. That's not the waterfall boss. Hmm. You can see at the very top of the waterfall map, it's got a boss and it's sort of got a big head that comes out in the center and then shoots down at you. The waterfall Again, is tough more, because. Yeah. More HR Geiger the screen is moving with you as you, yeah. Well, this so on the waterfall stage when you're going up, the screen is moving up with you. But the problem is, even though you might have a step that you know is beneath you, once the screen moves up, if you go off screen, you're dead. So if you fall, um, you die, even though you know that there's a platform below. Uh, it could be super <laughs> annoying, um, and it takes a lot of practice to get the map right, just to understand what's going on in order to get through it. So it's like it's like inverted cartoon physics. Like in the cartoon <laughs> world. Cartoon you, physics. Well, in the cartoon, if you walk off a cliff, as long as you don't look down, as long as you're not a, as long as you're not aware that you're off the cliff, mm -hmm. you will walk you will be suspended in the air. Whereas in this case, mm. even though you know there's ground beneath you, if you don't see it, you die. So it's the inversion of the Wiley e. Coyote physics. Right. <laughs> and this has been Makes Cartoon sense. Tech Corner right. with Mike. Okay, right. so next is So next we've, is we've read about Jeopardy. Yeah, we've talked about Contra and, enough, uh, so let's move on. Yeah, next is Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. Pretty good pretty good uh, versions of the game. I recall wanting to play them, uh getting around to it once or twice. I recall winning a few times. Fun games, but that's all I have to say. What about you? I actually had the Wheel of Fortune uh, game, I will admit, and uh, recently sold it off at a um, uh, garage sale. I think I got a couple bucks hmm. for it. It's it, it was an okay game, but the problem is that all the uh, you know quizzes and questions are so dated now because it's all based around when uh, the game was made. So if you want to go back and play it now, you have to know your pop culture references. And uh, you know <laughs> phrases and whatnot that were popular during that time. And uh, that's it for the uh, the prime time game show games. Okay, moving on yeah. to video shorts. The now playing section of Nintendo Power features every single new release video game now available or coming by the next issue for your NES. You've been reading our in depth review of Double Dragon, Contra, Gauntlet, Wheel of Fortune, and Jeopardy. In depth, really? You gave a page to Wheel of Fortune in Jeopardy. Although, considering the game material, I guess that's fair. Now it says, now you can look forward to more great games in the video shorts section of the magazine. Now, how do you put video shorts? You've been showing screen captures in the magazine because it's a print magazine, but now it's video shorts, and so now you're going to show screenshots of more game footage? Anyway, these. <laughs> Here you can take a peek at a long list of titles chosen for challenge, fun, and excitement by our Nintendo Power Magazine's editor. These games are the hottest out there. You'll see a lot of your favorite arcade video games in the reviews, as well as other hot favorites, including spy, fantasy, and science fiction. Now, the first game is Legendary Wings. I don't recall playing this game or really knowing anything about it, but it's a Capcom game, so it probably isn't that bad. Although the first screenshot is you being engulfed by this statue face. And it, the next issue seems to show like you walking along this wall of, of ribs. So apparently you're, you're swallowed mm -hmm. by this sphinx god. And instead of being a temple, he actually has a physical body that you can somehow survive inside. Uh, have you played Legendary Wings? 
No, but looking at the screenshots, it reminds me a lot of the Silver Surfer game, which is uh, horrendously difficult, but it switches from going a side-scrolling shooter to a top-down shooter in different games. And that's exactly what this looks like, so I wonder if it was built based on the same engine. It's made by Capcom, so I think it's, I think it's more merciful to the, uh, to the player, since they like to make challenging games, but not broken and impossible games. Like, you know, it's like Mega Man... <laughs> Like Mega Man 2, those games are tough. But with enough practice, right. you can beat them. Next is Iron Tank, I, uh, another typical flying over, collect the power up, and all of a sudden your plane can now shoot lasers and drop bombs and shit. Uh, anything in particular about this game from your uh, <laughs> experience? It's the, well, it's. Yeah, you're not a plane. First off, you're a tank. That's the main difference. Oh. It's the same kind of concept. Uh, it plays a lot like Jackal, from what I remember, um, except you, you don't really get to go back. You're just going forward, is my understanding. So it's okay, all right. So it's just it's not bad. It's another. Yeah, the thing about those games, like they're not particularly bad. They're just all the same because you know why right. be original? That's Nintendo's job. This is just SNK mm -hmm. Studios. Next is Gunsmoke. Uh, so speaking of which, yeah, Gunsmoke. So you were right. It's not. I don't think it is a Zapper game. Um, and it looks like it's more like Commando, where you're kind of going, same kind of thing. You're going scrolling from top <laughs> down, and you got to shoot all around you, baddies. It says, once you have a wanted poster, you can have a big showdown with the local bad guy. So now this doesn't make sense. Why would the bad guys be trying to collect bounties? Wouldn't it, like bounty hunters or sheriffs be coming after you if you wanted? Like, wouldn't the bad guy be wanting to have you in, in his <laughs> gang since you made a reputation for yourself? If you're the hero, how do you get on the wanted poster? Unless you're going through a super corrupt town where the bad guys are the sheriffs. Hmm. No thoughts? <laughs> Maybe you have to drive out corruption. <laughs> I know it's like it's like the Western version of Walking Tall, and instead of a two by four, you've got a shotgun or a machine gun or a Magnum or a smart bomb. Right. Because yeah, this is something you can buy with your points or dollars or doubloons or silver or whatever you get for currency in this game. You can buy a freaking smart bomb. Your pieces of eight. <laughs> <laughs> Next is Rambo. I can't imagine oh my why they make. Why did they make such a violent, post-traumatic, stress-induced, psychotic war vet who really should have gotten counseling and all the help that our vet veterans don't get? But no, like the kids think, no, he's a shirtless Stallone with a machine gun. Kids love playing violent <laughs> assholes, and. The, this the well, this little bit on, the screen, on Rambo. The screenshot here. Is, the screenshot for Sylvester Stallone. It looks like he looks like a screenshot from The Simpsons because his skin is like yellow instead of, you know, salmon or like pink colored. <laughs> yeah, I mean this little bit about Rambo. It kind of takes me off a little bit because it says, "Here's a video game based on the all-time movie hit, quote Rambo unquote." Yeah, there's no movie called Rambo. It's called First Blood. And that's what you want to put on a, on a kid's video game? Apparently not. So the story in here is based off of Rambo <coughs> 2, which is the one where he goes back to Vietnam to rescue his, his POWs and all that, right? Wasn't so I've actually played this Rambo? game, and this game is absolute wasn't, garbage. It is just awful. Rambo like you spend the first couple, couple of uh, levels just trying to talk to your sergeant and make it in before you actually get anywhere. And you just basically you have this little knife. You don't even have like a machine gun like the like the picture thinks you get. Oh my gosh! Now wasn't Rambo two called First Blood? Because I recall the first Rambo wasn't the first Rambo called Rambo. Rambo um, two was called First Blood. No, I think it was called. It was called First Blood Part Two. Was what Rambo two oh. Rambo two was? Yeah. So I sw <laughs> right because I went with the more make sensing version instead of like. First Blood 2, Rambo. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, the first movie is called First Blood. The, the second one is called, let me find it here. I 
I think it's called First Blood Part Two, or it's hmm. called Rambo, and then like the uh, the subtitle is First Blood Part Two. Okay. Anyways, next is terrible Dragon. Game. So moving on, yep. we have Dragon your Power. favorite Dragon Power, which is uh, this exciting adventure game is based off the classic Chinese story Si Hu Chi Monkey, which is not true because it was based off the uh, the classic Chinese story Journey to the West, not Monkey. Although it did feature a monkey king <laughs> warrior thing, but the story was called Journey to the West. And this hmm. uh, it says there are lots of kung fu like movements. <laughs> what the hell? Like say kung fu <laughs> moves, okay? What the hell are movements? That that's right. what you have after that's what you have after eating too much fiber. Now you begin deep in the mountains. I guess they didn't uh, want to nail it down and call it kung fu. <laughs> yeah, because they already had a kung fu game. But why not call it Dragon Ball? Because it has Goku, the little orange. Che the little orange gi wearing kid with the monkey tail from the amazing cartoon series Dragon Ball, which I enjoyed. And it's even got a picture of Shenron on the cover saying, I'll make all your dreams come true, Goku. Now, why call it Dragon Power when it's based <laughs> off Dragon Ball? Call it Dragon Ball so that we can tie it in with the amazing cartoon that we're watching as kids. You know, it's called marketing. Franchise tie-in. Mm. Now, did you ever watch Dragon Ball? Yeah, it just it just seems like one of those moves where locally, you know, that may not have been an impact impact of Dragon Ball, so they didn't know what to call it, you know, stateside. So they, I remember well, it's called Dragon Ball. The kids not gonna know what that is. I don't know. I like Dragon Power better. That sounds better. Let's rename it. And let's just but rewrite the, show, the story too while we're at it. But the show is out, right? The show was out. The cartoon. I remember watching a cartoon called Dragon Ball with Goku and Bulma and Krillin. And it was a fun game, a fun, like if I knew that there was a game based off the cartoon, that would have gotten me to rent this thing. You see Dragon Power, it's like, what the hell is that? Yeah, I don't know they if even, they, they aired they even Dragon Ball Bulma's in the States name. in the 80s or not. Yeah, they, well, I remember watching it in Canada at least, but uh, I don't recall exactly mm -hmm. how old I was. If this game came out before the cartoon, like that's just a misstep on their part, like just wait for the cartoon to come out. Wait for all the kids to love it and then put out the game. Now they have Bulma's name in this game is changed to Nora. And again, I don't know why. Like, that's just like, let's make this game not like Dragon Ball enough so that people won't play it. So I have no idea if this game is good or not. But uh, I probably, it's one of the games that I'll go, I'm going to check out just to see if it like makes a decent Dragon Ball game. Now, next is Metal Gear. Not Metal Gear Solid, just the original Metal Gear. Now, did you play this game? Because once, once again, I did not. Yeah, I have this game. And uh, my mom got it for me based on the recommendation of the video game store employee or the guy that worked at the Toys R Us or whatever, saying, oh, it's a great game. This game pissed me off so many times. And everyone goes back and, and <laughs> says, oh, I'm so nostalgic. The original, original Metal, Metal Gear game was amazing it was groundbreaking and even in the screenshots here you see like a hostage and you see you know snake going up against a, a tank and all you're this green. You know, kind of crazy action <laughs> you're stuff gr you're, you're yeah. green when you're rescuing people but, but when you turn into a tank you turn into purple hulk and now you're fighting a tank yeah i guess i mean uh but the reality for me was like i could barely even get past the first few screens because if you alert the guards at all, and there's like different parts where like they're smoking and not, so you gotta like walk past them carefully, and uh, the you know it, you just run into trouble very quickly. And you don't have a gun when you start; you do have a knife, so you have to punch them. And there's dogs, so it's anyways. It's very easy to get killed within the first few screens, and that's what always happened to me. So I barely got <laughs> anywhere in this game. And so I suspect so you had to like play it a million times over just to memorize exactly what character is going to do, run past, you know, without alerting alarms. <laughs> and I'm just not very good at stealth games in general. I mean, are are you any good at stealth games, or are you more of like a run in uh, and just, just spray everything with fire? Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 the guy that will kick in the door and go, I am I am death, destroyer of worlds. Look upon my biceps and guns in despair. And I will just lay waste to everything around because, you no, know, I like the fantasy of being an unkillable badass. 
But uh, the uh, I remember playing Metal Gear Solid for the uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid Two Sons of Liberty for the PlayStation. Never got around to mm. playing the PlayStation One version. I played the PlayStation Two sequel, and uh, I enjoyed it. Sneaking around in the box, not alerting guards, uh, trying to stay out of the line of sight. I like the idea, and I can play some stealth games, but uh, you know, I always. I always feel it when it's like, you've been detected by guards. Okay, well, plan B, time to kill everybody. Oh, wait, I only have a pistol and maybe a knife. Oh, shit. Right. So, uh, this is a game I'll probably yeah, have to so play. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much the whole game. <laughs> uh, Bionic Commando is but next. It, I, I tried playing this game, and mm -hmm. the controls seemed a little awkward and weird, and I just couldn't really get, I, could, I didn't get the hang of it enough. How about you? Well, I actually think they go over Bionic Commando in the next issue of Nintendo Power, so we may want to hold off about talking about it uh, too much. All right. Okay, next is City Connection. So let's move on to uh, City Connection. Yep, driving in big cities and you heave oil cans at the authorities. So basically, you I guess you're an, you're an asshole in this game because the authorities are trying to like stop you from driving recklessly and you have to run them off the road like their tunes is the driving cat and just make them go off cliffs and, and flaming fireballs and shit. And one of the screenshots says, watch out for that cat. Now the cat's as big as your car. So are you sure it's not a tiger? <laughs> Uh, this is a freaking next huge <laughs> cat. <laughs> <laughs> next is Star Force. This is a space age galactic battle more exciting than Star Wars. Really? Your boss is called Gordess, mm. which sounds like the wife of the leader of the Power Rangers. Now, it says here <laughs> in the last sentence, your name is Final Star. And only you can restore the peace that was lost 2,000 years ago. First off, you got shitty parents if they're going to call you, if they're going to call you final. And what makes you restore the peace that was lost well, 2,000 years ago? I mean, in all those 2,000 years, no so one else can mean, figure, you, get weapons you and shoot parent, things. <laughs> if you as a parent name your kid final, that means that you're like driving the way to uh, the urologist to get your tubes tied at that very moment. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, thinking more. No, you're just, you're, I'm making you're sure just depressed. that we're having no more children at this. You're the last one. The last this of the is line, final. son. This is final. <laughs> <laughs> Next is Freedom Force. Uh, now you have to shoot terrorists on an airplane. Didn't that happen in real life? Terrorists were shot. Uh, terrorists tried to take an airplane and they were uh, gunned down. I think it was the uh, Mossad that took them down. And uh, huh. but I love in this game, like the one thing I have to say about this game is remember when terrorists were white? Ah, the eighties. Those were the days. <laughs> and uh, well, this might I have been the uh, you know the Iran. Uh, you know, when they took all those people hostage on the plane, right? In the late 70s? Yeah, I think the, this the is Mossad, based on. Yeah, the I like Mossad how they call them the them unknown out. gorillas, though. And my favorite part... You don't want to get political. Yeah, <laughs> my favorite part of this is the name of the... Uh, yeah, <laughs> my favorite part of this is the names of the, of the good guys. Rad Rex <laughs> or Manic Jackson. Oh, yes. my gosh. Manic Jackson. If it was Maniac Jackson, you'd think, okay, he's a... He's a bit of a, an unhinged guy, but Manic Jackson. Now you just think of this guy who's energetic beyond his will. And, you know, he's sad and he just needs medication to level out his mind. He, he needs some Abilify. <laughs> he's both a brother very with uh, Action Jackson. <laughs> both, <laughs> both, yeah, both are very tough cookies who have the firepower and the moves to make these mm -hmm. gorilla nutcases move out. <laughs> are you evicting them? <laughs> It's like, dude, you're not paying your rent. No, yes. either pack up your shit and go, or I have to call Manic Jackson. <laughs> right. Oh, man. You don't want to hit these innocent victims with your zapper. All right, enough Only for your force. Next is Pack Watch. <laughs> I uh, didn't have much to say about this. How about you? 
No, it's just a clear advertisement of, hey, we're Nintendo. Here's all the games we have for our platform. Go and take a look at them and just lists out a ton of games. Um, let's yep. move on uh, to the Players Bowl contest, which is a staple of every single Nintendo Power issue, where if you send in the the survey, essentially, now nowadays it's like, oh, get a $25 iTunes gift card. you know. But back then it was like, mail us in and you have the chance of winning um, one of these great prizes, one of 50 exclusive Nintendo Power jerseys, one of 10 copies of Super Mario Brothers 2. And then the grand prize, there's one grand prize, is 10 games of your choice, any 10 games in our library. Oh, and then it's got the right. cheesy pictures of Howard Phillips without his uh, you know, bow tie on here in the, uh, in the sweatshirt or jersey, whatever it is. That's the guy, that's the guy holding the TV? Yeah, the I think so. The, uh, that's him. That's how. Wow. I I lo- like you gotta give Nintendo Power. Pretty credit. sure that's how they it got, goes. They got the kick ass prizes. I mean, grand prize ten friggin' games. <laughs> you know, just getting one game. It's like it's got to be your birthday or Christmas to get a friggin' video game. Mm-hmm. But here you can get like ten of them. Like I'm I'm covered until I hit puberty. Now the players <laughs> poll. It invites the listeners to reply with these questions. Now, interestingly enough, it still has wrong color Mario with the blue hat. And it says, how did you like the premiere issue on Nintendo Power? Do you plan on subscribing? How many game packs do you own? How long have you owned your NES? Which review did you like the most? What two games would you like to see reviewed in a future episode of Nintendo Power? What three games are you planning to purchase next? And please indicate in order of preference your five games. Now, the benefactor of this magazine filled in the card and i personally wish to thank jeremy salzman of new prague minnesota who was 13 at the time for keeping this magazine and not sending in the card i don't know why he filled it out if he didn't want to rip it out and send it in i guess he had a photocopier on hand or something and uh the games he wants covered are castlevania and kid icarus good choices And he plans to purchase Kid Icarus, Legend of Zelda 2, and Metroid. You know, this kid's on the ball. And his five favorite games are, in order, Zelda 2, Zelda 1, Kid Icarus, Karnov, which I have never heard of. Have you? Oh, yeah. I know know Karnov. I guess it's the... uh, (laughs) I guess it's the next Rygar. And Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. And uh, hmm. next, uh, any thoughts on this before we move on to the next journal? No, let's move on. All right, Ness Journal. Wire into the Ness Pipeline on what's happening around the world. Now, this talks about world news, and what they're covering is the release of Dragon Quest Three in Japan. As a representative of Enix, expecting sales of five million. Now, what they don't mention here, but I did find out later is the Japanese government, or I think it's called the Diet, because I don't want to call them the Diet because that sounds silly, they had to pass a law that specifically Dragon Quest games have to be released at the end of the week instead of the middle of the week with the rest of the video games because this game alone caused people to call in sick because they just couldn't get, they couldn't play this game fast enough. This game was tops. And in here, it shows a photo of Japanese people lining up to get this game. And to think, it says, Ninjas and Kung Fu Masters are no longer heroes to Japan- Japanese players, since now they're being replaced by warriors and sorcerers who bravely confront dragons with their sword and shield. Now, I played Dragon Quest 1. Don't remember too much of Dragon Quest 2, but it's on my list. And I remember in the original Dragon they, Warrior... Uh... It was weird to call it Dragon Warrior, Yeah, because wh- I recall only one dragon you fight, the green dragon, and you have to beat him to save the, to save the princess in the dark cave. Now, the funny thing about that is that you don't even have to save the princess. You can just plow through the cave, ignore the green dragon, and just defeat the dragon lord, and head back to the king and go, save the kingdom. And then he's basically like, what about my kid? shit i knew i forgot something and then you go out to do that but that's like end credit stuff like they only they only imply that you went out to uh, rescue the princess after 
But I love that you can, they give you that option so, of just forget her. Let the princess rot. <laughs> the best time, best option, I guess, in the game. <laughs> so how did the how did the numbering line up to, to localized versions? So we had Dragon Warrior instead of Dragon Quest. Now yeah. did it line up perfectly? So with Dragon Quest One is Dragon Warrior One and all that, or do they did yeah. they screw it up like the Final Fantasy series? We did get uh, Dragon Quest Two, and uh, they mentioned Dragon Quest Three coming out in Japan. I th- think it got a translation. Maybe not. I don't recall hearing anything about Dragon Quest Four, but uh, or Dragon Quest Five. Really, I didn't hear much about Dragon Warrior until uh, I think it was seven or was it six that came out for the PlayStation, and then Dragon Quest Eight came out for the PlayStation mm-hmm. Two, and then nine came out for the mm-hmm. DS, and I think ten is a multiplayer game. And I have nothing to uh, comment about that. Now, uh, next is Konami Awards Top Gun title. For the co- uh, four finalists launched their mighty F-14 fighters to battle for the coveted Top Gun title in the finale to Konami's Top Gun video game shootout contest. Now, without Nintendo Power magazine at the time, I have to wonder how did the news of this magazine get out? Like, how did the news of this contest get out? I have no idea. But when the dust cleared, judges tallied up the score and awarded Devin Devil White of Minneapolis, Minnesota. What the frick is up with gamers in Minnesota? The Top Gun title and first place prize of $5,000. This is incredible. You get $5,000 for beating a video game. I mean, this was in the '80s. Five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, you could like save up for a freaking car, and to sh- and to continue showing how freaking awesome it is, he gets to have his picture taken next to an actual friggin' fighter plane. Like, I don't know who this Devin White of Minneapolis is, but if our listeners can find out who this guy is, I would love to contact him just to find out. Like, did you get to sit in the plane? What'd you do with the money? Like. I'd like to find out what I'd like to hear from this guy, like catch up with him and, you know, see like, has your life continued to be awesome? Or was this like the peak? Like, I hope he's not like some junkie in like mm-hmm. Jersey right now. Like, like, oh, sorry, man, I spent that $5,000 and uh, I got my first taste of cocaine and it all pretty much went downhill from there. That, that, <laughs> that goddamn game ruined my life. Like, I, I hope that this led to more awesome things if we ever get to speak with this guy. And, uh, well, I think, uh, the, the, uh, early video game contests before we had the internet and all that. And before it was even in this magazine, how they would do it is if you were playing an arcade regularly, um, they would have contests and stuff like that in the actual arcade. Um, and then once in a while, you know, you might have, um, some kind of event organizer contact multiple arcades and have a regional, competition and you know very rarely you'd have a national competition uh things of that nature and i think that's how they those came about back in those days okay before we move on we talked before about how zelda nintendo was not Mm -hmm. very helpful with the first quest of zelda well right above it has zelda tips and tactics here's just what you need to conquer the evil and mysterious ganon you'll discover shortcuts find out how to get information I don't think there's much information in this game, but if it's buried enough, thanks for finally telling me how to get it. And discover clever ways to conquer enemies and save the princess. You can order this booklet for $4.95 by giving your Visa MasterCard number to our customer service departments. Now, you gotta realize your your clients are kids, pretty much. Like, I don't recall too many grown-ups pl- or too many uh, teenagers in the 80s playing this because I was just like an eight-year-old kid but then again I didn't hang out with too many kids too many older kids or kids in general so still like that they're telling you to use your visa instead of like ask your parents it's like they must have like well this was just a surprise to me I thought this was just for kids but then they have like a kid getting five thousand dollars. Well, they probably you know want to get their parents go give, go ask your mom or dad's permission in order to call this number and use our credit card. I mean, they have the same thing at the beginning of the magazine, the you know the player tip line, all that kind of stuff. I mean, kid doesn't have access to be able to 
get the credit card unless they jack it from mom or dad. Yeah, I'm. Uh, let me, I just need to go uh, pay for some bills, Dad, for you. Oh, thanks, son. Meanwhile, they're <laughs> dialing up Nintendo. Yeah, give me the Zelda Tips and Tactics booklet, please. <laughs> okay, now, for some reason, Nintendo Power has decided in this next section to cover movies. Not even video game movies. <laughs> just movies like Pee-Wee's Big Top, Eight Men Out, and Vibes. And they even mention... Uh, like, Eight Men Out features Charlie Sheen, Platoon. Now, again, this was like a magazine. You know kids are reading this. Why are you mentioning Platoon? Well, there was a video game called Platoon, but did you ever see the movie Platoon? Should that really be a video game for kids? I don't know. But, because uh, I didn't play Platoon. But here is a real gem for me. A nice note for us to... Uh, a nice strong note for us to near, to come to the close on is celebrity profile Kirk and Candace Cameron. These two celebrity siblings mm-hmm. pop up on your TV screen more often than Mario and Luigi. Kirk and Candace appear weekly on two of the most popular shows on primetime, Growing Pains and Full House. Now, Candace Cameron, then 12-year-old at like being 12-year-old at the time, Lovable DJ Tanner from Full House said that she has rescued the Mushroom Princess, who we established is not Peach, since this one is brunette, but hasn't been able to free Princess Zelda. Now, I think this is her just keeping the blonde count down to one. Her. Okay, I see her game. You can hang out with brunettes, but as long as she's the blonde on scene, the only blonde, she's fine. Now, Kirk, on the other hand, is having problems with the Amoeboids in Gradius. And he thinks he will have to place a call to game counselor soon. Well, being a freaking TV star, I think he can afford the hotline. But uh, I think this was before he had to get all of his answers through prayer. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, you could and say that uh, Gradius left him behind, as it were. <laughs> And the it says the NES is very popular on the set of Full House, but she doesn't get too much time on it because she's busy working. Now the Cameron siblings enjoy Super Mario Brothers, Legend of Zelda, Gradius, Pinball, and Rygar. Damn it! What's up with Rygar? I mean, like, how could this hey, game have me by completely? I I, uh, I really need to try this game. I'm seeing too much know, of it man. in this issue. And finally, you need to get basically on with that disc armor. <laughs> so, uh, say no to drugs and say yes to Nintendo. And uh, the mailbox, rounding out letters to, uh, I guess the letters were to the Nintendo fan club, and then they just got transferred to Nintendo Power. And uh, P. Durr right. asks if Howard Phillips has close to 300 games for the NES. Could you send us some of the can you send us some of the names of the games he has? Are they ever going to be made public? And could you tell me the exact name of the theme song to Spy Hunter? Now, they pretty much tell they tell, they tell this guy to slow his roll by saying, "Be patient. There's mm-hmm. already over 100 games for the NES." And the best of what Howard reviews will make it to the stores. By the way, the music from Spy Hunter is the theme from Peter Gunn. That's as made famous by the Blues Brothers. Now, did you see any notes, uh, any mails of any mailbox letters of note? Yeah, I want, like this one in particular. It's a little odd, and uh, I'm going to flip forward to the other section that involves letters because um, it's related. I don't know why they have two sections in the first issue. I think they combine them later. But anyways, this one says, My friends and I have a club called the Videoizers. Here are a few <laughs> suggestions for some other clubs. Try saving up weekly for a new tape every month. So far, our club has 13 tapes. In our club, we save a few dollars a week for extra money to call the Nintendo hotline. A friendly game counselor kindly helps us out when we have trouble on something. Uh, so I just want to be like, what the hell are they, t- they tell Nintendo about their tape club? Is this like VHS videotape? 
or is it, or are is they it, like taping the Nintendo hotline phone calls illegally and doing a wiretap? <laughs> like what's going on? That would there? That, that that would be the audioizers. This is a different group. This is the videoizers. So I guess they would uh, record ah. either they're buying either they're buying blank tapes to record their gameplay footage, or it has nothing to do with video games at all. And they just wanted to tell everybody, hey, can you mention that we have this club? Because we just hang out and buy home movies right. or uh, like home videos. I have no idea. We're in, uh, uh, yeah, the videoizers from Maiden, Massachusetts. Go ahead and look them up if they're still around. So the other the other <laughs> uh, letter I wanted to read uh, is another club-related letter. And uh, I wasn't aware that there were so many clubs back in those days that did this kind of thing. So this one says... Our club is called the NES Masters. We know right off who our power player is. His name is Ace Ebb. He writes to Nintendo all the time, telling them his accomplishments on games. His hobbies are playing Nintendo games, period. He has no pets. Instead, he plays Nintendo all day. He beat Metroid in three days, Tyson in five, Ooh. saved Zelda in five, and finished Super Mario Brothers in five from Chicago, Illinois. And it's got a picture of this kid, Ace Ebb. And looking next to uh, a lamp as, with two and looking and owls. looking smug as ever, <laughs> and looking like a smug. Yeah, he's crack. folding his arms. He's got his he's got his hands under his armpits. He's got his head cocked sideways. I mean, he just looks like the kind of one kid you want to slap. I'm gonna be honest with you. He's let he's letting you know that he, he ain't messing around. He, like this is a power player right here. But he's also letting you know that his his parents don't give a shit about him. And they're letting him play <laughs> Nintendo all freaking day. <laughs> instead of instead of bonding with instead of bonding with him or like trying to get him to like play with other kids, it's like, what about a pet? What about interacting with other yeah. living things? Nope, Nintendo. And uh, nope, Nintendo. That, yeah, I don't know. You should be yep. <laughs> bragging about that. <laughs> and that's the uh, that was from the video spotlight, which I guess is different from the mm. uh, mailbox. These players write in to tell us about their video prowess. How is that different than the uh, than the mailbag? It's. Uh, I think this is uh, uh, the, the video spotlight is when they brag about how they did. They're like, "Hey, here's how good I am at this at this game," whereas the other one specifically just questions or comments. Hmm. Okay, so next is the top thirty. I remember reading skipping to this section a lot whenever I got bored with the contents of the magazine, just to see what games are coming out or what games are uh, popular enough to warrant my notice. Now, topping number one, The Legend of Zelda mm -hmm. prides itself at topping all other games. Were you able to go all the way? Its sequel, Adventure of Link, is coming soon. Next is Punch-Out. Third place is Metroid. Now, it says here, it has stubbornly held on to its popularity. This is the first issue, okay? How can it stubbornly hold on to anything where it's making <laughs> its debut? Number four is Mario they, Brothers. They must be five, uh, referring the Fun Club. Yeah. Yeah. Number five is Kid Icarus, and uh, that seems to be it for the games. Well, you you you're not taking notice. It says top thirty, and guess what number thirty is? That's right. Oh, it's Rygar. <laughs> now, I take issue with this. Damn you, Rygar! <laughs> I take issue with this because it has it has a number of points next to the name. And it's actually tied with Ring King. But Ring King somehow got number 29 spot. So that's bullshit. I'm just telling I think you right it's now, just Rygar should be way higher up on that list. This is some alphabetical <laughs> preference. <laughs> like, this is like intolerance against the letter Y. Well, they could have, they should have, they should have tied it at 29 then. Just saying. Now, they mentioned the original Mario Brothers as 25. That's cool. In Ghosts and Goblins. Friggin' unrepentant, difficult, mm -hmm. bastard game, Ghosts and Goblins, is 23. And somehow Akari Warriors is 19. Mm. Uh, like, I hope the nerd. <laughs> I don't know why you didn't like this. that game. It's okay. I hope, I hope the nerd doesn't listen to this podcast because I, I think he'd have to, something to say about the Akari Warriors. <laughs> like, uh, how, how well, could that game be better? He's got to stick. He's got to maintain Rygar. that he doesn't like those games, you know? How can that game be better than Rygar or Gradius? Mm -hmm. ah. So this seems to uh, bring our our issue 
and our episode to a close coming out next month for September and October of 1988 will be Simon's Quest, Bio Billy, and you were right, Bionic Commando. Get all the action, get all the inside action, and mm-hmm. a super poster in this hot release. I can't wait to see what amazing centerfolds we're going to get this time. And it says, Howard Phillips, we'll see us in September. I can't wait for a hot release. <laughs> Look, wait until, hold it in until the end of the show. No, it says, see you oh, in okay. September, Howard, <laughs> Howard Phillips. P.S. I'm working real hard on Zelda 2. Look for it. It's going to be great. So, our first issue <laughs> is done and in the can. Hopefully the next issue, the next uh, future episodes will be shorter now that we're no longer introducing the categories unless a new one show up. Mm-hmm. So, Mike, how can I get a hold of us um, before next time? Uh, well, we're available on Facebook at Playing With Power Podcast. We have a Twitter, Get The Power 88. Okay, and we're also available, of course, on iTunes now. So, yes. So please rate, rate, and rate and review us. Send us in any comments, questions, suggestions you have. Yeah, if you have any uh, issues or anything that you want to leave comments on, uh, leave them at our uh, Gmail, which you can find on our Facebook page, or a post on the Facebook page, or the Twitter. And uh, when the issue comes up, we'll uh, be sure to uh, share them. So I'm Ben. And I'm Mike. And now you're playing with power. Entertainment System. Now you're playing with power.